1853, the Taiping army captured Yangzhou, and the Qing court was weak, surrounded by foreign powers. Dong Xuheng's soul traveled through time and possessed this era with a probability of one in a billion. Watch me, learn from the barbarians and master their skills to control them, forge military weapons, promote westernization, promote education, open up the wisdom of the people, awaken sleeping lions, and rebuild China. I am magnificent in China, and I should have stood proudly at the top of the world. The group number of this book is 5703399007. Welcome to join the group to chat and make friends. Keywords of the novel, returning to the Qing dynasty as a salt merchant with no pop-ups, returning to the Qing dynasty as a salt merchant. Download the complete set of TXT, returning to the Qing dynasty as a salt merchant. Read the latest chapter on doing salt merchants. Chapter 1, Soul Piercing Salt Merchant's Son You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Soul Piercing Salt Merchant's Son Young master is awake, madam, young master is awake. Trying to prop up his heavy eyelids, Dong Shuheng felt like a deflated ball, unable to exert any strength. But the girl's exclamation of surprise came in her ear. The voice was a bit ethereal, but very pleasant to listen to. Blessed by Buddha, Amitbha Buddha, Hanger has finally awakened. At this moment, the voice of a middle-aged woman came, with a crying tone in her voice. After a few minutes, Dong Shuheng finally accumulated enough strength to open a gap in his eyes. Through the gap, the first thing that caught my eye was a delicate young girl's face. Not stained with pink, but with a hint of baby fat inside. A pair of red phoenix eyes that seemed to speak, with slightly raised corners and willow eyebrows lightly furrowed. The long black hair was tied up in the girl's bun. As his eyes gradually adapted to the light in the room, Dong Shuheng finally saw clearly that the girl was wearing a late Qing style double breasted skirt with a lotus embroidered on the cuffs. Next to the girl was a woman who appeared to be in her forties, with a haggard expression and red and swollen eyes, probably crying multiple times. Where is this? Dong Shuheng asked in a weak voice, intermittent. Young master is awake, madam, listen, young master is speaking, the girl exclaimed in surprise. What, young master? Dong Shuheng's heart was in turmoil. How could someone still play tricks on me for being brave and righteous? Dong Shuheng remembers that he was patrolling in the jurisdiction before. A female high school student jumped into the river to commit suicide due to excessive academic pressure. A group of people gathered around the scene, but none of them went down to save people. Coincidentally, Dong Shuheng passed by. As soon as everyone saw the police arrived, they immediately felt like they had seen a life-saving straw. Amidst the cheers of the crowd, Dong Shuheng, who only knew how to paw, was experiencing a decline in intelligence all the way. The reverse in my mind was all the eager gazes from everyone, as well as the few loud oath to enter the police. In fact, so many people can weave ropes with clothing, and if not possible, they can pull a personal ladder. But none of these Dong Shuheng expected that he would just have time to take off his shoes and jump into the cold river water. Then he vigorously lifted the girl and pushed her towards the shore. Then he felt his leg cramp. At this moment, he thought of a famous quote from a Dong Lin party member hundreds of years ago, the water is too cold. The sudden numbness caused Dong Shuheng's body to lose balance. The cold and polluted river water choked into the nose. It's really uncomfortable, why do so many people choose to jump into the river and die? Dong Shuheng felt himself slowly drifting up and saw his body slowly sinking, with a star on his shoulder badge reflecting a faint light. Is this the so-called near-death experience in science fiction movies? It turns out that the soul really exists out of the body. But what will happen afterwards? Is it just complete dissipation? It seemed like a movie was playing in front of him. Time went back and he saw a man being chased by a group of bandits. He felt sorry for him and wanted to lean over to help him. Next came the current scene, where he woke up and entered an ancient style bedroom. After twisting his head with all his strength, 
Dong Shuhan finally saw the layout of the room clearly. I saw a dim oil lamp burning in the room, lying on a carved wooden bed. There is a white veil curtain hanging on the bed, and there is also a wooden round table and two grand tutor chairs in the room. Just now, the woman saw that Dong Shuhan was completely awake and immediately approached and said, Shuhan, are you awake? It's really the blessing of our ancestors. Water. Dong Shuheng said with difficulty. Yes, young master, please wait a moment. Huiye will go and get it right away. The little girl quickly poured a glass of water over and gently scooped it up with a spoon to deliver it to Dong Shuheng's mouth. After drinking some water, Dong Shuheng felt much better and his brain gradually regained control over his body. Mirror. Dong Shuheng said to the girl beside him. Young master, do you want to look in the mirror? The girl asked in confusion. Dong Shuheng nodded lightly. I saw the girl fetch a simple mirror from the bookshelf by the bedside and place it in front of Dong Shuheng. Now, Dong Shuheng really confirmed that he had traveled through time. Inside the mirror is a handsome young man's face. The facial features are clear and soft, slightly emaciated, and the eye sockets around the big eyes are slightly raised. Sorry, mom, my head hurts and I can't remember many things at the moment. Dong Shuheng said to the woman next to him. Listening to the woman's tone just now, it must be the mother of this body. Oh, these damn bandits, why did they hit my son's head? It made me suffer from amnesia. The woman burst into tears again. Dong Shuheng felt a headache when he heard a woman cry. Immediately spoke up and stopped, saying, don't cry, I just temporarily lost my memory and will remember. Yeah, as long as you're okay, Xu Heng, you need to get better quickly. This family still needs your support. The woman finally regained consciousness from her sadness. Mother, please go rest first. You have been suffering these days because your child is unfilial. It would be great if Huier is here. Dong Xu Heng pointed to the little maid next to her, who seemed to have called herself Huier just now. Well, all right, then take a break. Maybe you'll remember tomorrow morning. Huier, come and take care of the young master carefully, the woman said to the little girl next to her. Mother went out, and Dong Shuheng called the maid to his side. Huier, my mother was here just now, and I dare not ask for fear of scaring her. In fact, this young master doesn't even remember his own name. You can tell me about my background and the current situation outside, but I cannot let my mother know. Dong Shuheng ordered. So Huier shared all the information she knew about Dong Shuheng, just like her resume, hmm, young master, Huier listens to you. Your name is Dong Shuheng, and you are 18 years old. There is also an older brother named Dong Shutong above you, born to your aunt, who has been missing for over a year. There are also two younger sisters below, Dong Shuyun and Dong Shumi, who are twins, both only 16 years old this year, born to your third aunt. Why do these people in the family only see you and your mother? Dong Shuheng asked. Um, the old master passed away two years ago, and the eldest aunt also went with him. The young master went out to do business early last year and disappeared. There are also two young ladies living with the third aunt in Gaoyu. Everything is really going wrong in this family. Dong Shuheng thought to himself. Huier, what is this place? This is Dong Tai County, Yangzhou Prefecture, and it is a separate courtyard of our Dong Mansion. What time is it outside now? It is now March of the third year of Xianfeng. In February, bandits captured Yangzhou City. Fortunately, our whole family moved early and moved to Dongtai Biyuan. Our losses were not significant, but we don't know if the industry in the city is still there. Huier said sadly. After listening to Huier's narration, Dong Shuheng fell into contemplation. In 1853, during the peak of the Taiping Rebellion, the Qing army was at a disadvantage. The saying goes that heroes emerge from chaotic times, and China is facing a major upheaval that has not been seen in 3,000 years. 
the beautiful country is brewing a civil war in the midst of an economic crisis. Britain, France, and the bear are about to engage in a fierce battle in Crimea, and the Japanese nation is about to be pried open by a black ship, posing a threat to the rule of the Tokugawa family. As a soul wanderer, if you eat and wait for death, wouldn't it be a sorry arrangement of the hand of fate? Moreover, the current situation is that merchants are equal to fat, and in the next decade, Yangzhou will be a turbulent place. As the forefront of the confrontation between the Taiping army and the Qing army, Yangzhou is undoubtedly a nightmare for the defenders of comfort and a paradise for adventurers. In his past life, Dong Shuheng had always been a person who loved comfort and was always at ease in both life and work. Seems to be an outsider who sees through everything. In this life, as a soul piercer who is even more difficult than winning the lottery, if you don't fight and fight, you will feel overwhelmed. And not arguing at this time may be destruction. Just like this time, the owner of his own body encountered many strange things when he went out to salt. Although salt merchants are wealthy, salt bandits occasionally appear in northern Jiangsu. But it's all about salt ding who can't bear the hardship and is forced to have no way out. These people come from poor backgrounds and can only serve as salt laborers for generations. If there was a profession in my Qing dynasty that was even more difficult than tenant farming, it was salt laborers. So these salt bandits are not the generation of great villains, usually only seeking wealth and not harming others. This abnormal action, if we say no one is pushing behind it, even ghosts don't believe it. Dong Shuheng felt that his life was very valuable, thousands of times more difficult than winning the lottery, and naturally it was extremely precious. So he must protect himself. Grandpa Mao once said, the barrel of a gun leads to political power. To protect oneself, one must first master the gun barrel. If in the past, this was naturally impossible. Merchants are all pigs, how can they control the gun barrel? But now that the Qing dynasty has encountered opponents who threaten his rule, the old rules can be abandoned. Young Master Huier's call brought Dong Shuhan back to his senses from contemplation. Oh, Huier, thank you for telling me these things. You can do whatever the young master asks Huier to do. There's no one who can thank the maidservant of the master's family. Huier lowered her head and said. Looking at Huier, she looks a bit shy. Dong Shuhan gradually developed a liking for this era. At least there are people here who care about themselves, aren't they? Huier, when did you come to our house? Young master, five years ago, second lady bought me back, and since then, I have been following you. Do you blame madam for letting you leave your family? How could that be? Our whole family is grateful to madam. Madam bought me back, allowing me to have enough to eat and new clothes to wear. Selling my money saved my younger brother's life. Madam is the great benefactor of our family, and Huier knows how to repay kindness. Besides, young master, you are also very kind to Huier. As she said, the little girl's cheeks turned red. This evil old society. Dong Shuheng could not help roast in his heart. It's really amazing. After all, the injury had not yet healed, and soul possession also needed to be adjusted. Feeling drowsy, Dong Shuheng yawned long. Huier had a keen eye and released her small hand that helped Dong Shuhan massage. I helped Dong Shuhan cover himself with a blanket, blew out the oil lamp, and walked lightly to the outside. Outside, the rustling sound of undressing came, causing Dong Shuhan's heart to tremble. So this girl is sleeping in her own room. Oh, by the way, it seems that ancient maids were like this. The previous chapters were really bad but now I have written more than two hundred chapters. Looking back, I would like to roast. When I wrote, it was a temporary idea, and I didn't have any preparation. It was all based on what I had in mind, and I can write wherever I want. So if I still want to read this book, and if I want to support the new person, I can jump over and don't pollute my eyes. The first time I wrote a book seriously was not to make a living, but to share what was in my mind with everyone. Every day when I step into bed, 
I control my brain to engage in various fantasies, which makes it easier for me to fall asleep. I was wondering if I could record the thing I fantasized about. Throughout one's life, every autumn of plants and trees, one must leave behind something to carry their soul. As they reached middle age, they gradually sent away several relatives. To be honest, the lives of those who live are still the same, while those loved ones are gradually fading out of our memories. As long as there are humans on earth, as long as there are people reading, then the words we write will still be alive. Can this be considered a comfort to oneself? When we are about to say goodbye to this world, I will think that my thoughts still live in this world through words. Alive, it's great. Book Group Number 5703399007 Everyone join the group to chat, make friends, and criticize the author. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 The Big Boss of the Humorous at Home. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 The Big Boss of the Humorous at Home. The next morning, when Dong Shuheng woke up, he found that he was already able to move and play. It turns out that he was mainly hit in the head with a blunt blow, probably due to some concussion, plus the time he was unconscious before. These days, it's almost done. Upon hearing his movements, Huier quietly walked over. Young master, you're awake. Don't move yet, I'll go help you get some hot water to wash up. She was about to walk out. Wait a moment, that. Huier, can you help me get my clothes? I'll wake up first. Young master, why don't I tell madam first that your body is just right and it's not advisable to move too much now? Huier was obviously worried about her young master. Huier, be obedient. Young master, my body and bones are clear to me. If I don't move any further, I will rust. Okay, I'll help you get your clothes now. Huier brought a blue long shirt, which is very popular among students. Dong Shuhan put on his clothes with the help of Huier. He stood in front of the mirror. What caught the eye was a graceful young man, not as delicate as a wealthy man, but rather with a hint of toughness. The nose bridge is straight, the sword eyebrows are starry, and it seems that he is more handsome than his past self. After suffering from a serious illness, the body has become slightly emaciated, and the braids on the head and bald skull are very uncomfortable. Hey, when can I cut off this tail? Don't think about it for now. He still thinks it's important to keep his head, as for this braid, let's treat it as a cosplay, anyway, he doesn't have a braid in his heart. After washing up, Dong Shuhan went to the mirror and admired his handsome face for a while. Huier's flowers trembled with laughter on the side. Upon leaving the room, Dong Shuhan, guided by Huier, went to greet Mrs. Chen. Mrs. Chen also woke up early. Most people in this era do not have the habit of sleeping in. Oh, Hanger, why are you up? Go back and rest quickly. Mother, my son is giving you a bow. These days have made you worried. Dong Shuhan, the worker, gave a neat salute. Anyway, this mother who loves her son is worthy of respect. Chen was moved and tears kept rolling down her face. There is nothing more satisfying for a mother than filial piety from a son. Mom, hurry up and don't cry, otherwise the child won't be able to kneel up. Hanger, get up quickly. Your body is just right. What kind of ceremony should you do? Chen quickly said. Mother, today my child is in a hurry to get up. On the one hand, I want to greet you, but on the other hand, my family's business has been neglected for many days, and I am very worried. No wonder my child has been severely affected by this. Many things are not clear, so I kindly ask my mother to inform me. Blessed by our ancestors, our eternal son is both filial and takes care of his family business. He is really a good child, Chen said with great relief upon hearing Dong Shuheng's words. Hanger, our family has always been a salt merchant, but since Emperor Jiaqing switched to using salt tickets, our Yangzhou salt merchants have fallen far short of what they used to be. Fortunately, 
Our master saw this early on and shifted our family's industry from selling salt to hoarding, transportation, and commerce. Nowadays, there are still 30,000 acres of farmland in Dongtai, managed by your uncle Chen Dongsheng. In addition, there are 12 sand boats running on the route from Shanghai to Jinan via the canal. They are managed by the ship owner Lu Dehai, who is an elderly person in the family and very reliable. A few years ago, your father opened a Runji trading firm in Shanghai, relying on the foreigners' concessions, doing foreign goods business with them. There is also a salt farm in Tezeo, which produces salt every year and earns some income. Of course, there are still more than 500 salt farmers to support. Recently, there have been incidents of banditry. The waterway to the south has been cut off, and the fleet can only run north. I don't know what's going on with the commercial banks in the south. I heard that foreigners are also restless. Fortunately, your uncle Lu's eldest son, Qing Bei, is watching there, so it's probably not a big deal. After listening to Chen's narration, Dong Xuheng finally had a sense of depth in his heart. In fact, last night, his heart was always focused on the future. Whether one can rise up with the wind or not really depends on the industry left by their own father. People are all driven by a desire to survive, and in this era, to survive well, one must constantly become stronger. Mother, how much silver is left at home? What? Do I need silver? If a child wants to take charge of their family business, they always need to understand their family background. These days, the shopkeeper has reported that there is still around 350,000 tails of working capital on the counter, and of course, there is also 1 million tails of inherited silver at home. This money is only known to our mother and son, and the master has instructed us not to move it casually. I'll go, I'm really a wealthy second generation. Chinese people really have the habit of hiding silver. Mother, the child wants to talk to the shopkeeper alone. Well, my son should be on his own now. As a woman, I will have many inconveniences. I will send someone to inform the shopkeeper to find you, and in the future, you will directly communicate with the shopkeeper regarding family matters. Returning to her residence, Huiyer had already prepared breakfast. Breakfast is a bowl of hot fish soup noodles, which is a special snack here in Dongtai. Dong Shuheng was very fond of it in his past life. There is also a small plate of meat sauce and a small plate of pickled vegetables on the table. Dong Shuheng sat down and skillfully poured the dishes onto the creamy fish soup noodles. A strong and fresh taste rushed towards me. This wild fish that has not been contaminated is fresh. I took a sip of noodles and felt a little hot, but Dong Shuheng liked to eat them at this temperature. If the temperature was even lower, he would feel a fishy smell. Accidentally, Dong Shuheng caught a glimpse of Huier next to him pursing her lips. Obviously, he was afraid that the young master would see him drooling. Huier, go to the kitchen and bring another bowl over, just say that this young master doesn't have enough to eat. Oh, yes, young master, but you couldn't finish a bowl before. If I ask you to go, why do you have so much nonsense? Huier was puzzled in her heart. The young master woke up yesterday and was very gentle with herself. Why did he suddenly get angry? Thinking about it, Huier went to the kitchen and brought over another one. Dong Shuheng ate a portion, took the towel handed over by Huier, wiped his mouth, and said, I'm full. Take this and eat it, don't waste it. At this moment, a young servant came to report and the big shopkeeper arrived. Dong Shuheng asked Xiao Si to lead the shopkeeper to the study. The shopkeeper's name is Lu Mingyuan, and he grew up with Dong Shuheng's father since childhood. He is also a servant and friend. His eldest son Lu Qingbei had learned foreign languages from foreigners and was a fluent translator. He worked at Runji Trading Company in Shanghai, while his second son Lu Qingnan was brave and fierce, following Lu Dehai on a boat. This old shopkeeper can be said to have firmly tied himself and the Dong family together. Dong Shuheng looked up and saw an elderly man in his fifties walking slowly. The old man is thin in stature, but very capable, with a neat strand of beard on his chin. 
The pair of glasses on the bridge of the nose makes the old man look much more open-minded. Dong Shuhan quickly stood up and welcomed the old man, saying with a smile, Uncle Mingyuan, Shuhan is feeling unwell. We had no choice but to invite you to meet us. Please forgive us. Dong Shuhan showed great respect to the old man and saluted him as his nephew. Young master, you have ruined me. There is a difference between master and servant, so don't lose your dignity. If there are no outsiders present today, it's okay. Next time, don't be like this Meng Lang, Lu Mingyuan said solemnly. He he, Uncle Mingyuan, can't I pay attention next time? Dong Shuhan smiled like a child. You, you are still the same as before. Just now, Madam told me that you are ready to take over the Dong family's business completely. As the saying goes, bear the crown, bear the weight. Now that you take over the family business, you need to be prepared. Well, I'm ready, Uncle Mingyuan. Huir, go out and close the door, don't let anyone get close, Dong Shuheng suddenly turned his head and said to Huir. Huir nodded in agreement, walked out of the room and opened the door, standing far outside the door. In the study, Lu Mingyuan had a serious expression on his face. If you have anything to say, please speak clearly, boss. Uncle Mingyuan, here are only the two of us. There's no need to have any taboos. What is your opinion on the current situation of the court? At present, the Qin court is weak and there is a rebellion of bandits inside. They have captured Jiangning and established the capital and country, which has become the climate. There are foreign powers surrounding them, greedy and cruel, constantly sucking the blood of our dynasty. This is a chaotic era, said Lu Mingyuan. I thought to myself, why is the young master interested in the current situation? Although Lu Mingyuan was a shopkeeper, he was also a scholar when he was young, and he loved to criticize current trends. Therefore, he should have been awarded the title of scholar by the government. Later, with the help of Dong Shuheng's father, he became a shopkeeper in the Dong family and eventually started his own business. However, Uncle Mingyuan really hit the nail on the head. He has such insight that he is better than many governors and governors of the imperial court. He is truly talented in condescending to be the head of the Dong family. Zhe Sha is old and decadent. I can only rely on my old age to sell my old age in front of you, the child. Uncle Mingyuan, why can our Yangzhou salt merchants be called first-class officials, second-class merchants, by the world? It's not because our Yangzhou salt merchants not only speak business, but also understand politics. Under the current situation, if we stick to our family business, wouldn't we just sit and wait for others to take advantage of us? I don't know my boss, what do you want to do? Lu Mingyuan said sternly. To be honest, Uncle Mingyuan, I only have vague plans, but there are some things that can be done first. Firstly, Please ask Uncle Mingyuan to help me select a few reliable people, one with a face that is more lively, clever, and good at socializing. This person must be able to firmly control our hands, and there are also a few I plan to do as personal guards. I plan to take them with me. I think there was something suspicious about the last incident. Secondly, help me prepare a sum of cash, about 100,000 tails. I don't think this will affect the turnover on the counter. I have an urgent need for this money, and there is currently no profit, so I may need to invest it later. I plan to do a big business with the court. I'm planning to go out for a walk later, to the salt field, and then to Shanghai. You can transfer another 50,000 tails to the cabinet in Shanghai, which may need to be used. Okay, young master. All the silver money at home is hard-earned by the old master. I hope the young master can use it carefully. I won't ask too much, so the young master can do it if he thinks it's necessary. Lu Mingyuan said. I don't know why this young master was injured but instead became enlightened. The young master before was gentle and somewhat cowardly. But when I spoke to the young master just now, it made people feel that he was mature, decisive, and resolute. Lu Mingyuan left, and Dong Shuheng sat alone at the desk, 
picking up the short hair on the table and writing and drawing on paper. Dong Shuheng is not studying history, but he can also get a rough idea of some things. He was worried that he wouldn't be able to remember it in the future, so he took notes and planned for the future. Book Group Number 5703399007 Everyone joined the group to chat and make friends. End of this chapter Chapter 3 The Hardest Thing is Salt Ding You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 The Hardest Thing is Salt Ding In the next few days, Dong Shuheng stayed alone in his study and could see his notes filled with crooked calligraphy. Miss Huier may not understand what the young master is writing. But looking at the young master's serious appearance, he is really handsome. Huier feels like she's going to become a flower addict. So much so that when adding tea to the young master, he poured the tea into the ink stone. Hey, how good is this? How about this young master take this girl away earlier? It's another sunny day, and Dong Tai in April is already full of spring. Although it may be a bit cold in the morning and evening, the sun in the daytime still gives a warm and cozy feeling. Huier, the weather is nice today. Let's take a walk with me, young master. I'll take you to Sisi for a trip. Okay, okay. Huier was so happy that she skipped a beat. Speaking of this girl, she was only sixteen years old, and in later generations, she would still be a big girl who could only play coquettish with her parents. Arriving at the front hall, Dong Shuheng saw a middle-aged man with a hunched back. Quickly ask Huier who this is. This is the steward of our other courtyard, surnamed Zhu. It is said that he is a relative of the Sanfu family. At this moment, the steward Zhu also saw Dong Shuheng. Hurry over to pay respects. I saw that the person was less than 1.6 meters tall, and his hunched body made him appear even shorter. Small eyes, pointed mouth, a sparse and burnt yellow braid trailing behind like a mouse's tail. Hello young master, I'm here to greet you. As soon as he spoke, Dong Shuheng saw his yellow teeth, with a few missing on both sides. Looking at his nails again, they are also withered, yellow, and rotten. Dong Shuheng worked as a police officer in his past life and often dealt with drug users. Judging from the appearance of manager Zhu, he is a typical drug addict. Dong Shuheng didn't know about the past, but he could also guess that the steward Zhu entered the Dong family to work through nepotism. Seeing Dong Shuheng staring at him, manager Zhu's eyes drifted, as if dodging. This made Dong Shuheng feel a bit puzzled, whether or not Zhu, the steward, had done something shameful. Upon arriving at the jutting room, Dong Shuheng saw seven or eight jutting people lying in the room, boasting and farting, and three others throwing tantrums. Only two dark men sat silently in the corner, holding the whistle tightly in their hands and sitting alone. Mmm. Steward Zhu cleared his throat for a moment, and everyone saw the young master of the main family coming. They quickly stood on both sides, bowing their heads in silence. Steward Zhu, this is the other courtyard you are in charge of. When did my Dong family have such bad rules? Dong Shuheng angrily said, causing the steward Zhu next to him to admit his mistake repeatedly. You two come out with me, he pointed to the two people in the corner. Turning around and leaving the room, the two of them who had been speechless in the corner just now followed up with their whistles. Manager Zhu also bent down and followed out. You go to the stable and help me arrange a car, Dong Shuheng said to Manager Zhu. Manager Zhu hurriedly left. At this moment, Dong Shuheng turned around and looked at the two of them, only to see one short and strong, and the other tall and thin. When the two stood, their saws were steady and there were thick calluses on their hands, indicating that they were practicing their skills. Why haven't I met you two? Dong Shuheng said. If I were to reply to the young master, the two of us were not going to file a lawsuit. It's because we are refugees from other places and have been marginalized in the family team. Because there are subsidies available for field work, everyone is eager to go, and manager Zhu is a local person who will inevitably face the locals. So basically, we are not arranged to go out for field work. 
Therefore, young master, you haven't seen the two of us. The short and strong one of the two replied. Looking at these two people, Dong Shuheng always felt that they had a story. So he asked, you said you were refugees, where is your hometown? As for the young master, the young ones have fled from Linqing, Shandong. Their name is Lu Jigang, and this is my senior brother A Nenki. Linqing. In his past life, when Dong Shuheng watched a movie, he knew about his southern and northern legs, which were the tan legs of Linqing. Have you two practiced Kung Fu before? I dare not deceive the young master. The younger two are junior brothers who have been practicing leg exercises with their master since childhood. Oh, how many ordinary people can you fight alone? It's not just a small boaster, an ordinary strong man. The small one can knock down five, and if my two brothers cooperate, they can knock down fifteen. Back then, the master saw that the two of us had good fighting skills, which was why he brought them into the family. My father really knows how to pick up people. At this moment, the carriage in the courtyard arrived, and Dong Shuheng and Hui Er got on the carriage. The two servants, Xiao Lu and Xiao Ai, naturally had to follow the carriage. Outside the city, it turned into another world. This was Dong Shuheng's first time in his life going out of the courtyard. The county town was fine, although it was not big, Dong Tai had not been affected by the war, and the short streets were lined with shops, making it very lively. Outside the city, there was another scenery, and on the way to Sisi, I happened to encounter a village called Yending. Dong Shuheng ordered the driver to park the car next to the village, and saw several children catching loaches in the mud pond at the entrance of the village. These children have slender arms and legs, big heads and bellies, indicating malnutrition. Suddenly, a child caught a loach and happily grabbed it and ran towards home. At this moment, Dong Shuheng looked up and saw that the village was actually formed by a pile of thatched huts. The one-person high wall made of mound soil is covered with thick straw, which is the most common plant in the saline alkali land of the coastal mudflat. Cattle and sheep are unwilling to eat and can only be used to build houses and burn fires. Yending harvests this type of thatch every year to cook salt or build houses. Dong Shuhan once read a note by a Qing dynasty person describing the miserable life of Yen Ding. In the scorching heat, there is a row of salt boiling stoves in front, and another row of salt boiling stoves in the back. The salt farmers braved the heat and ran back and forth between the two rows of boiling salt stoves, boiling salt. This situation is like being in the alchemy furnace of the Supreme Lord, as if to refine and change one's tendons and bones. The scene, when you think about it, is unbearable. The bodies of the salt growers, fumigated and roasted by fire, may initially have white skin, but gradually turn red, over time, it turned black. The salt workers who have been surviving in the salt field for a long time have skin colors like iron blocks, and their flesh is like dried breasts. There are few trees in the place where the salt workers cook salt. In the scorching summer, when the salt farmers were boiling salt between the salt fields, they were forced by the heat inside the stove. In order to temporarily postpone the barbecue, they would jump out between the large stoves and then stand in the scorching sun to cool off. The salt workers worked so hard, but they only earned about a hundred copper coins from their hard work every day. It is these hundred or so copper coins that the Salt Ding family's wife and children still rely on for their clothing and food. Because they earn little and spend more, their daily meals are usually nothing more than turnips, crucifery, brassica biennial herbs, up to 100 centimeters in height, the root is fleshy, white or yellow, without spicy taste, the stem is upright, and the root is cooked or used to soak pickled Chinese cabbage, or as feed. It is used as a substitute for food in alpine regions, potato, taro, cauliflower, etc., for salt farmers, the rare high-quality foods are buckwheat, wheat, and so on. The white rice consumed by the officials and gentry outside for each meal is something that the salt farmers have never consumed throughout their lives, their children and grandchildren. 
Salt Ding people can eat a meal of white rice all their lives, just as it is said that Taoist priests can enter Tiantai Mountain to eat flax rice, ancient Chinese believed that eating flax rice was one of the cultivation methods to become immortals, and the legendary immortals also ate flax. The formation of this concept is closely related to the origin of flax and the characteristics of flax itself. Huma originated from the mythological western regions in the eyes of ancient Chinese people. It is also a commonly used medicinal herb in medicine, and various factors have combined to make this originally ordinary plant a Taoist cultivation tool for taking food and seeking immortality usually, it is a rare encounter that can only occur for thousands of years. In the hearts of the salt farmers, it is still uncertain whether white rice exists. Apart from food, the clothes of the salt farmers also make people feel heartbroken. They usually wear quail clothes with various knots, and in the harsh winter, they only wear sandwiches. A family with better living conditions may store a tattered cotton jacket. However, this situation is only limited to two or three out of ten. Dong Shuhan did not continue walking towards the village. He had secretly decided in his heart to fight for these miserable salt workers. Returning to the car, he looked at Huir and asked, do you also make diced salt at home? Yes, young master. So how does your family compare to them? Dong Shuhan pointed in the direction of the village. This village is close to the county town, and the salt farmers can occasionally find other ways to make a living. My home is in Taipei, which is deep into the salt area. The smell of grass and wood ash is everywhere, and even wild vegetables cannot be dug out in the fields outside. When we are hungry, we will grab some salt and eat it, which makes us want to drink water. When we drink too much water, our stomachs won't feel hungry anymore. I only had a good life after following the young master. I couldn't even think about my current life before, the little girl said as she fell into contemplation. Who else is there in your family? Ah! Huier's thoughts were pulled back by Dong Shuheng. My family also has a father, mother, older brother, and younger brother. My father's name is Shen Yofu, my mother's surname is Ding, my brother's name is Shen Dali, and my younger brother's name is Shen Erniu. When you have time, I'll take you back to take a look. Thank you, young master. It's been five years since I last went back. I really don't know how my family is doing now, the little girl said, her eyes turning red. The Chinese people are undoubtedly the most hardworking in the world. As long as they are liberated, they will exert tremendous power, which is enough to drive changes in history. There is now a small group of vested interests, including a certain ethnic minority who claim to be rulers, including the landlord class who act as intermediaries for governance, and foreign powers who want to constantly suck blood from China. These people are the three great mountains oppressing the working people. Only by breaking them can this group of hard-working people unleash their power. Dong Shuheng fell into deep contemplation, and he became even more determined to go forward. Now only he knows who the most powerful person is. Qing Ting doesn't know, landlords don't know, foreign powers don't know, and even the heavenly king in Jiangning City doesn't know. Book Group Number, 5703399907 Welcome everyone to join the group to chat, make friends, and criticize the author. End of this chapter Chapter 4, Adventures in the West Stream You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Adventures in the West Stream There was nothing to say all the way, and Dong Shuheng and his group had already approached Sisi. Huier, do you know the story of Sisi? Huier doesn't know, young master, can you talk to Huir? Okay, this. Legend has it that a long time ago there was a handsome guy named Dong Yong, who was my own family. One day, he saw seven beautiful women bathing in the West River and secretly took their clothes away. Woo woo, it's so touching, what happened later? Huir couldn't help but get involved in the play. Even Xiao Lu and Xiao Ai on the side were mesmerized by the sound. It is indeed an era of entertainment scarcity, and telling any story can captivate people. Alright, when you go back tonight, I'll tell you dream of the Red Chamber. 
This story is very long, enough for you to listen to for a long time. Huya widened her eyes with a look of anticipation as she charged towards Mr. Dong. Sisi Ancient Town has been a gathering place of literati and poets since ancient times. During the Song Dynasty, three salt officials, Yen Shu, LV Yijian, and Fan Zhongyan, entered the court from the Sisi River as prime ministers. So there are people visiting here year-round, not to mention that it is still the season for spring outings, and it is also a bustling destination for tourists. In addition, there is the well-known Guangfu Temple here, which is bustling with incense and has attracted a large number of kind-hearted men and women to pray for incense. Before reaching Sisi, Dong Shuheng saw the Guangfu Temple Pagoda from a distance. It is said to have been built during the Han Dynasty, and the towers of later generations were rebuilt, which are newer than the current ones. However, the towers at this time appear more authentic and ancient. Visiting Sisi is actually mainly about visiting Guangfu Temple. The coachman parked the carriage outside the temple. Dong Shuheng entered the Buddhist temple with Huir, Shao Lu, and Shao Ai, a pair of humming generals. Meeting a temple to worship Buddha is a tradition among Chinese people. Whether you believe it or not, it is not harmful to worship. There are no mountains in the temple, so there are no mountains in the entire Dongtai because it is an alluvial plain. However, rows of pine and cypress trees were neatly arranged. Yangzhou has many wealthy merchants, so temples are not short of incense and oil money. In order to meet the needs of the rich, many pavilions and rockeries have been built for people to visit and stop. Dong Shuheng and his four companions walked towards the main hall and played. Passing by a pavilion, there were two young men with seven or eight servants pretending to be literati and courtesans. Dong Shuheng ignored and was about to walk over. At this moment, a male duck's voice was heard saying, Isn't this Dong Air? Eh, you haven't died yet? Sleeping trough, this is a case of finding fault. I didn't look at the almanac when I went out today. Dong Shuheng looked at Xiao Lu next to him in confusion, and as for the silent Xiao Ai, he directly regarded him as a transparent person. This is Huang Hao, the third young master of the Huang family. Next to him is Zhang Menglong, the second son of the salt field inspector. Xiao Lu whispered in Dong Shuheng's ear with great insight. Who should I be? It turned out to be a yellow mouse. You haven't even died, how could I die? You. I see that the maid next to you looks pretty good. How about it? One hundred tails, sell it to me. I heard that your old lady still retains her charm. How about I sell her to me as a cook for one or two silver? You, you. This Ya's mouth was also very damaged, and Huang San was so angry that his seven orifices were filled with smoke. Third master, don't talk nonsense to this kid. We have more people to do with him. As he spoke, he gave a glance to the servants next to him, and all the servants grabbed their short sticks and surrounded him. Lying down, this is just a matter of saying no and starting a fight. I'm really mouth-watering. Dong Shuheng looked at the two generals beside him, two brothers, it's all up to you. Don't embarrass the martial arts masters of this era. Seeing that our little Lu and Ai remained calm, Dong Shuheng's heart was slightly relieved. I saw our little Lu who standing still by Dong Shuheng's side. The tall little Ai stepped out with his long legs. Standing on the ground with a long stick, a series of flying kicks knocked down the four opposing servants who were walking ahead. These unlucky guys are rolling on the ground with their chests covered. The three people behind suddenly stopped their steps. Hesitating whether to retreat or escape. Xiao Ai was obviously not prepared to let them go. He kicked them with his stick and foot, hitting their knee joints every time, making a few or two thrusts. The remaining three of them also crouched on the ground, holding their legs and howling. Lying in bed, it's really tough to talk too much. Pick seven at a time, or it's all done in one go. He turned around and looked at Xiao Lu beside him. Are you a talkative person who only talks without practicing? 
He he, my senior brother is a martial arts enthusiast with excellent leg skills and has also learned Shaolin stick techniques. I'm just a little worse than him. Besides, there must be someone to protect the young master, isn't there? Xiao Lu said shamelessly. Humph, wait for me. After saying these words, you usually have to run away. Sure enough, Zhang Huang and his companions walked in a disarray surrounded by a group of servants limping and limping. Young master, that young master Huang San has fallen in love with Miss Xu Yun at home. He had previously invited someone to propose marriage, but you refused. In fact, Madam San had agreed. That's why this young master Huang San has always harbored resentment. To be honest, this Huang family is the fourth general merchant, with a better family background than ours. However, in recent years, they have opened many smoking houses and colluded with foreigners, resulting in a bad reputation. I heard that Huang San also smokes a lot. Young master, you are right to reject him, Hu Er said on the side. Dong Shuheng only then knew the whole story. It's been so long, I haven't seen my twin sisters yet. This Huang family and that Zhang family need to pay more attention to themselves in the future. During the conversation, before Dong Shuheng and his four companions arrived at the main hall, Dong Shuheng invited a bouquet of incense to pay homage to the Buddha. Just as he was turning around and coming out, he collided with someone full of energy. Sleeping in a slot, it's really a bit difficult. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. The person across from me had already spoken before I could speak. I saw someone with a pink face and jade carving, dressed in men's clothing, but the softness of the collision just now made Dong Shuheng suspect that the other person was a woman. Looking again, as expected, that person doesn't have an Adam's apple. Oh, I think it's my fault, young master. It's easy to see, smart people are easy to do. Oh, brother, you're welcome, Wei Yuzhen thought to herself. Brother, are you going to pay homage to Buddha? Dong Shu asked. Perhaps dressed in men's clothing, this girl had the temperament of a later generation girl, with a strong scholarly flavor, which immediately piqued Dong Shu Heng's interest. Apart from Huir, he has never had contact with any other girls in this world. People always develop curiosity about their peers and opposite sex. Dong Shuhen also went straight to offer incense, and after coming out, the woman just now also walked out of another hall. The two of them looked at each other with a smile, and Dong Shuhen asked, I don't know your senior name yet. Would it be convenient to inform you? Since the other party is wearing men's clothing, asking questions from Dong Shuhen would be considered Meng Lang. Oh. I am Wei Yu. I am temporarily staying in Gao Yu with my father. Recently, my father has been feeling unwell, so I came to the temple to petition. Wei Yuzhen replied. The two introduced each other and decided that it was still early. Dong Shuheng invited Wei Yu to take a walk in the temple together. The two of them chatted from place to place. Wei Yuzhen has a deep family background and considerable knowledge, and even has some knowledge about overseas affairs. This surprised Dong Shuheng quite a bit. At any time, women in the Qing dynasty had this kind of insight. Of course, after being bombarded with information by later generations, Dong Shuheng casually spoke words that were astonishing to Wei Yuzhen. Brother Dong, do you think China is really as weak and backward as foreigners say? No, of course not. We are never weak, we just haven't discovered our own strength. Napoleon, who dominated Europe a few decades ago, said that we are just a sleeping lion. Brother Wei, think about it. The four ancient civilizations, Babylon, Egypt, India, and China, still exist today. Only China still exists, and this is something we are proud of. China is sick now, but it's not deep, but it needs someone to treat it, otherwise the disease will worsen. So, who does Brother Dong think can save China? Wei Yuzhen stared at Dong Shuheng and asked. People who open their eyes to see the world. What? I've heard someone say this, Brother Dong. 
Wei Yuzhen was surprised by Dong Xuheng's words, as they also appeared in her father Wei Yuan's mouth. This Dong brother is so knowledgeable. Oh. Dong Xuheng was also calculating in his heart that anyone had this vision. Is it him? Brother Wei once heard of learning from the barbarians and mastering their skills to control them. In the past century or so, Europe has indeed been ahead of us through the Industrial Revolution. However, with our profound cultural heritage and population resources, we may not be able to catch up from behind. But in the current court, the literati in the court are hiding their ears and stealing bells, using their brooms to cherish themselves, closing their eyes, pretending to be a giant, and being arrogant but being beaten again and again. Sigh. Dong Xuheng took advantage of the heat to hit the railway. It is unfortunate for Brother Dong to be relegated to the position of a merchant despite having such knowledge. As a friend, I have made a deal with him. I will definitely go to Gao Yu to find him someday when I have free time. Dong Xuheng was very excited in his heart and finally met a chatting friend in this world. The two of them talked for such a long time, which made the people brought by both sides anxious. Firstly, Hui er came to find Dong Xuheng, and then a little book boy came to call Wei Yuzhen. The two agreed to see each other again next time. On the way back, the little book boy said to Wei Yuzhen, Hee hee, miss, I think that young Master Dong is quite talented. I've never seen you talk to people for so long. The children of those high ranking officials in Gao Yu can't do anything serious except drink, listen to plays, and write a few useless poems. Eh, Yinger, you little girl, you probably have a crush on yourself. When you go back, I'll let my father tell you about the marriage. Oh, no, miss. I just want to follow you. There's nothing good about men. I was wrong, can't I? I promise not to tell the master about today's matter when I go back, hee <laughs> hee. Hmm, you have some eye power. On the other hand, Huier also asked Dong Shuheng inexplicably, Young master, I see that you had quite a conversation with that young master today. Hee <laughs> hee, does Huier look at her parents' handsomeness and take a liking to them? I'm ignoring you, young master. It was already evening when I returned home. Dong Xuheng went to pay his respects to Mrs. Chen and picked the unimportant ones to talk about today's matter. At this moment, a young man came to report that manager Lu had brought someone to find the young master. In the study, the shopkeeper Lu Mingyuan stood with a middle-aged man bowing in front of the desk. Dong Xuheng carefully scrutinized the middle-aged man. A face that nobody pays attention to in the crowd, very suitable for oneself. After a few casual questions, the person was able to answer very fluently and naturally. My name is Ji Mingshan, and I am currently working in a caravan in Anhui. I am 35 years old this year, and at the age of 12, I started working as an apprentice at the counter. The whole family should thank the Dong family for their survival. The middle-aged man introduced himself. Dong Xuheng's main purpose in finding such a person is to establish his own information channel. In this technologically backward chaotic world, whoever first grasps information can seize the opportunity. He asked Ji Mingshan to wait in the wing room, and the shopkeeper Lu brought in ten more people, all of whom were powerful Kong Wuli. A few people can clearly see knife marks on their bodies. The first person is 1.85 meters tall, with muscles growing up to the top of their head, and the most obvious feature is a large bald head. Um, this is the dog's son Lu Qing Nan. The young master lacks reliable people around him, so I took the initiative to call the dog's son back. Lu Mingyuan saw Dong Xuheng staring at his son, so he introduced him. It turns out to be Qing Nan. Uncle Mingyuan has a heart, and with Qing Nan by his side, I feel at ease, Dong Xuheng said with a smile. Lu Qing Nan touched his bald head and smiled foolishly. End of this chapter. Chapter 5, Reform Starting from Home. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5, Reform Starting from Home. The person has arrived, and Dong Xuheng is about to start his own planning. 
He first called for Ji Mingshan and gave him a stack of materials. Then he said to him, You don't have to rush to look at these materials. When you leave, I will give you 500 tails of silver first. Your first task is to recruit people. You can recruit people from the various schools and schools in the city. Another thing is to make friends with various gangs of all sizes. As for how to make friends, of course, it's about spending money. Don't be reluctant to spend money, it's about making others think you're stupid and have more money, so that more people will come to your door. Ji Ming Shan looked bewildered upon hearing this. The shopkeeper officially called me here, and it turned out that he wanted me to spend money. Isn't our young master suffering from heartbreak? There is no need to doubt that the money thrown out now will eventually generate value. You need to remember that adding icing on the cake is better than giving charcoal in the snow. You need to help those who have no way out to gain a loyal group of subordinates. I won't go into more details. Follow the plan I gave you and you will become the head of the information department in the future, oh, equivalent to the current shopkeeper. Ji Ming Shan left with a puzzled expression on his face, and he also took his first mission to investigate the whereabouts of manager Zhu from the other courtyard. Dong Xuhan called Lu Mingyuan in again and handed him a chart. Lu Mingyuan quickly browsed through and asked, Change the business name of your home to company. I do know that foreigners in Shanghai call it that way, but I don't quite understand the departments below. Huaihai Group Company is our self proclaimed name in the future, which will facilitate our future dealings with foreigners. The office below mainly serves the general manager and chairman, drafting documents, uploading and distributing them. You can imagine writing a book and trying to recruit some teachers with high salaries. The finance department is responsible for the circulation of funds and budget settlement work, which is equivalent to an accounting room. The education and training department is mainly responsible for employee training, and we will establish some schools that will also be managed by this department. The Human Resources Department is responsible for recruiting talents, as well as personnel compensation and assessment management. The Business Department is mainly responsible for future business coordination with various subsidiaries. The Science and Technology Department is responsible for technology research and development accumulation. The External Relations Department is responsible for the company's external contacts. The Information Department is responsible for information collection and organization. The Propaganda Department is responsible for external promotion. Dong Xuheng spoke out his family business management structure in one breath. In fact, the original model can also do these things. But he is just lazy, dividing tasks into smaller ones, so it will be much more convenient for him to allocate tasks in the future. Uncle Mingyuan, You've been calling over all the business managers these days. Also, please compile a list of their specialties and introduce them to me. Let's all go to Dong Tai and hold a meeting together to finalize the personnel. Additionally, I also need to share with you the next development plan. There's one more thing. You've arranged for someone to go to a trading firm in Shanghai these days and ask me to buy a batch of firearms from Qingbei. Remember to ask Prussian firms if they sell Dreiser rifles, and Americans if they sell Colt revolvers. If they do, try to buy as many as possible, the price is not a problem. I don't understand these things, but I will have someone bring the words to me. What's the use of my boss asking for these firearms? It will be useful soon, Dong Xuheng said leisurely as he looked out the window. The sky is about to change. The next few days. Dong Xuheng is waiting for news at home. When you have nothing to do, tell stories to Hui or little girl. All kinds of fairy tales from ancient and modern times, both in China and abroad, make the little girl Hui are infatuated, pestering Dong Xuheng every day, never leaving. Very. Even at night, she secretly crawled into Dong Xuheng's bed. As for Dong Xuheng taking the opportunity to demand compensation, the little girl had no assets and could only make a promise with her own identity. The details of this will not be repeated. Today, as a guest at Zhang Menglong's home banquet, Huang Hao, 
as Zhang Menlong's close friend, naturally came to support him. However, Huang Hao's gift was very heavy today, which made Zhang Xujian couldn't stop laughing. At this moment, Zhang Menglong took the opportunity to say, Dad, the second son of the Dong family humiliated me and Huang Gongzi last time, and obviously didn't take you seriously. Whatever you say, Dad, you have to make decisions for the child. You stinky kid, you know you're causing trouble for me. Now that Yangzhou city has been occupied by bandits, everyone should be careful. If you touch the Dong family at this time, it's easy to attract others' attention. However, recently the governor has asked various regions to organize group exercises to assist in the recapture of Yangzhou city, so we can find a way to support him. Huang and Zhang looked at each other with a smile, and then they pushed him away. How to need him was not our the final say. At this time, the Dong family's courtyard was also bustling with people, and the managers of various cabinets, salt fields, caravans, and farms were gathered together. Dong Shuheng found a carpenter to create a huge circular conference table, which was placed on the main hall. The words, the first annual meeting of Huaihai Group, were written on large red paper. The chief executives were in charge of things, and they couldn't help roast that the young master was really capable of doing things. In the end, everyone had to leave the position facing the door to the host, and the others sat further along both sides according to their qualifications. All of you are elders who have been working hard with my father for many years. Xu Heng is not talented and inherits my father's aspirations. I cannot help but thank everyone for their support in my work. First of all, what I want to say is that from now on, all employees of our company, as long as they do not harm the company's interests, will be responsible for their retirement and their children's education. There was a loud bang below, and everyone was surprised. Isn't this an iron rice bowl? You should know that even officials in this era do not have this welfare. Immediately, enthusiastic applause rang out, and several old shopkeepers were even so excited that tears welled up in their eyes. My boss is truly benevolent and righteous. Having such a company is willing to sell their old life. Dong Shuheng also introduced some new company structures and management models to everyone. Simply put, the headquarters is the brain of the company, and by managing branch offices through various departments, it is possible to effectively strengthen control over them. Talking about the company's management to a group of old antiques has dampened Dong Shuheng's enthusiasm. Dong Shuheng further divided the business under the group company into Huaihai Shipping Company, Huaihai Salt Industry Company, and Huaihai Trading Company, with foreign trade separately classified as import and export companies. In addition, there is Huaihai Agricultural Company, which is divided into various farms, as well as grain processing plants and food factories. The most troublesome thing is the selection of managers for various departments and companies. The headquarters is chaired by Dong Shuheng and managed by Lu Mingyuan, who is directly responsible to the chairman. Finally, the managers of each department were selected through screening. The process is not intense, and people in this era are still relatively humble. Most people still do what they used to be best at. Mainly, Dong Shuheng is currently facing a shortage of talent. This meeting can be said to be a united and victorious event, which has gathered the hearts of a group of elderly managers in the family business and clarified the direction of future development, saving the country through industry. After the meeting, Dong Shuheng left the Minister of Human Resources behind. This is a middle-aged man in his forties, named Zhu Allen, who is from Shanghai. I have done human teeth before. He is skilled at observing words and expressions, and is a seasoned and shrewd person. He also has a good understanding of the rules of various local governments, so Dong Shuheng appointed him as the Minister of Human Resources. Minister Zhu, I'm keeping you here to give you a task. Take someone to Shanghai as soon as possible and find an American named Wall in Chinese. He is 22 years old and was born in Massachusetts. These pieces of information are basically correct. After finding him, you need to hire him into the company with a salary that he cannot refuse. Also, 
If you go to the Yu surname Qianzhuang in Hangzhou and find a 20-year-old runner named Hu Guangyou, poach him from our company and say, I will serve as a manager. Don't be fooled by the fact that Hu Guangyou is young, in history, he himself will come out to work alone in these few years. Sent away the Minister of Human Resources. He called Lu Mingyuan and Lu Qingnan in again. Uncle Mingyuan, how's the musket I asked you to buy before? Boss, the guns have just been transported through Tongzhou today. Due to banditry, there is still sufficient stock at the Shanghai Foreign Exchange. However, due to the financial constraints of the Qing court, we did not buy much, so it was easy for us to buy them this time. We bought 500 Dreiser rifles, 25 tails of silver each, and another 15 tails of silver front-loading rifles. We bought 1,000 of them. I didn't want to buy them at first, but the other party wanted to package and sell them. The Colt revolver you mentioned costs 12 tails of silver each, and we bought 500 from Chichang Trading Company. In addition, this Chichang Foreign Company is also willing to cooperate with us for a long time. The Prussian Defue Foreign Company said that there are not many people using rear-mounted rifles like the Dreiser at the moment, and they are willing to appoint instructors for us. Of course, we will pay the salary. We have also made contact with the British side, but the proud British people believe that we are a civil society organization and do not agree to trade with us. This time, with ammunition added, we have gone a total of more than 50,000 tails. Calling on Lu Qingnan and bringing more than 30 guards from the security department, Dong Shuheng and his team arrived at a warehouse in the suburbs. This is a remote location of Dongjia Farm in the suburbs, sparsely populated. The warehouse used to store grain, but now one of the granaries is filled with long wooden crates. Dong Shuheng ordered someone to pry open a box filled with Colt revolvers, each with five bullet holes. He opened the second box again, which contained a brand new Dreiser rifle with a strong gun oil smell. This type of gun is very close to the rifles of later generations, and the bayonets on the gun are neatly stacked on the side. A few boxes of bullets were brought to the nearby warehouse. The current Colt pistol uses paper shell fixed ammunition, which is not very fast to load, but this gun can fire continuously and has a considerable power, making it a close combat weapon. The copper shell fixed ammunition used by Dreiser can effectively alleviate the problem of air leakage in the magazine, but in the future, we will need to buy several bullet production lines from the Prussians. Before that, we need to recruit a group of weapon manufacturing workers to Shanghai and build our own weapon workshop. During this period, Shanghai was filled with Western explorers everywhere. He is said to be an explorer, but in fact, he is no different from a homeless person. Most of these people can't survive in their own country, so come to Shanghai to see if they can make a bucket of gold. Therefore, Dong Shuheng is not worried about not being able to recruit people. As long as you have money, you can recruit anyone of any kind. And people in this era are still very professional. If you give him money, he will work for you. Everyone's national and ethnic consciousness is not yet strong. Book Group Number 5703399007 Welcome everyone to join the group to chat, make friends, and criticize the author. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Successful Conspiracy and Establishment of Civilian Groups You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Successful Conspiracy and Establishment of Civilian Groups On the other hand, Zhang, the inspector, wrote a copy of the request for recruiting soldiers to assist in suppressing bandits and handed it to the governor Yang Wending. The fleeing governor Yang Wending approved the copy without saying a word. Agree to have the salt merchants recruit Ding Yong on their own to go to Gao Yu and assist in defending Yangzhou. Because Yang Wending has no soldiers left in his hands, and he is eager to take credit for his crimes. Anyway, he doesn't want him to pay. Ding Yong's injuries are not his concern, and in the end, if there is any credit, it will also be his responsibility. Why not do it? Upon receiving approval, Zhang Inspector immediately summoned salt merchants from various counties in the eastern part of Yangzhou. Announced the recruitment of Ding Yong from various households in Yangzhou, 
with each household recruiting 500 positions. Dong Xuheng stands out as the representative of the Dong family. After Mrs. Chen found out, she couldn't help feeling worried. Xu Heng, you have never been proficient in martial arts since you were young. How did you manage to lead troops to fight? Your uncle works on the troughs, why don't you ask him to speak up to the troughs? Mother, please rest assured that the child will not charge into battle. Moreover, the court's recruitment of Ding Yong is only for some hard work. It is not our turn to attack cities and pull out strongholds, Dong Shuheng comforted. Dongs is currently working in a remote salt field in Taipei, and he is busy with construction. Dong Shuheng has launched a cash flow model, recruiting 1,000 Huaixi refugees who are currently working on construction. Watching a newly established small military camp rise from the ground, complete with arsenal, walls, and bunkers, this place is connected to Dongtai through the Chuanyang River, with convenient waterway transportation. Dong Xuheng also built a small dock by the river. On the training ground, Lu Qingnan led a team of 500 people, all of whom were recruited under the name of the company's security department. Most of them were from Yending background and some were refugees from the mountains. I saw that their skin was dark and thin, but extremely determined. These 500 people were selected through fierce competition, and Dong Xuheng gave them such good treatment. Many people broke their minds and wanted to squeeze in, which can be said to be their only chance to change their fate. If you want to talk about why Dong Xuheng dares to privately raise Yen Ding, he he, with the current control power of the Qin court, as long as you don't openly rebel, it's okay. Besides, there are bandits outside now. Which wealthy family doesn't support 180 courtyard guards? And in a place like Dong Tai Salt District where birds don't defecate, no one will come and take care of such things. Speaking of which, the reason why the new 4th Army and its new headquarters were placed here in later generations was because they saw the vast territory and sparse population. As long as the card masters several important waterways, outsiders generally cannot enter. Dong Xuheng organized this team into a teaching camp according to the pattern of battalion platoon. Five Prussians were responsible for the daily routine training of this battalion. These individuals were hired by the Ministry of Human Resources through Defu Trading Company in Shanghai, all experienced veterans of the war, led by a person named Carl. Upon seeing Dong Xuheng's arrival, Lu Qingnan ordered the team to stop. After several days of training, 500 people lined up in five squares, at least looking neat. All at ease. Pia. There was a sound of landing. Commenting, was another sound of leaning against his feet, which made Dong Xuheng very satisfied. These few German beards perfectly executed his modified infantry code. Starting from today, I hope you can treat yourself as soldiers. I spent a lot of money to help you buy the most advanced firearms in the world today, and hired Prussian instructors. They are the strongest army in Europe. What you will face in the future is not only protecting your home and hospital, but also the real battlefield. Those who follow me, Dong Shuheng, I guarantee that you will also have the opportunity to make achievements, give birth to your wife and children, and change your destiny. Let's say whether you will do it or not. Damn it. Damn it! Five hundred people shouted with an overwhelming momentum. Speaking of which, there is a monthly salary of two tails of silver, a pension of fifty tails for those who die, and the company helps arrange work to support themselves when they are injured. Such good treatment is not even available to the eight banner soldiers. Life in this era is not worth money. The owner gave himself these things and sold his life for the sake of his family. Chinese people have a strong sense of family, and for the sake of their family, they really don't even fear death. The reason why Qing soldiers were not able to do so ultimately came down to the inability to guarantee their treatment. If they died and their families did not receive compensation and protection, who would be willing to sacrifice their lives? It's strange not to run away. The team continues to train. Lu Qingnan was called over. Qing Nan, the court has just ordered us to organize a team training of 500 people to help recapture Yangzhou. I will send people to recruit again, 
and now this group of people is carefully selected. I plan to train them as officers. Of course, you still need to continue to focus on training and make use of the evening time to let these military students read and write. Our team will become larger in the future, and we will need a large number of grassroots officers. Yes, to ensure the completion of the task, it's a bit difficult to learn how to write. My subordinates are all rough people, and there aren't really many who have read books. Then treat it as a task, learn ten words every day, and punish those who cannot pass the level. Lu Qing Nan had a helpless expression on his face, constantly lamenting for the soldiers under his command. So a strange scene appeared. In the military camp where the prototype was first seen, the sound of shouting and killing was deafening during the day. At night, under the oil lamp, several old men and a group of large soldiers were reading the three-character classic and memorizing their grandson's military tactics. A group of big-headed soldiers cannot express their grievances. I'm not afraid of death, are you still afraid of recognizing a few words? Dong Shuheng didn't let them learn anything advanced, he just hired a few old scholars to teach them how to read, and he also had to memorize the exercises. It's okay if you don't recognize words. Follow the teacher's instructions and read them sentence by sentence. If you read more, you will naturally memorize them. Modern war strategy is becoming less and less important. New weapons simplify war into a comparison of firepower, logistics, and willpower. Ordinary formulas are average and can be calculated in advance. Afterwards, every other day, Dong Shuhan would go to the military camp to accompany the soldiers to eat. The scene of this group eating is really unsightly. In the words of the team members, the white rice and mantu were beyond their imagination in the past, but the master managed enough, just like in a dream, they must eat enough. After so many days of recuperation, these young people's bodies have also become stronger and stronger. Sometimes Dong Shuheng would also share some overseas experiences with them to broaden their horizons. However, what soldiers love to hear the most is the stories of famous ancient Chinese generals. I guess I came to listen as a book review. Sometimes he also talks about the current situation in China, which ignites a strong sense of patriotism among the team members. Everyone knew the reasons for their suffering, which made the members of the regiment even more disgusted with the Qin court. Dong Shuheng didn't expect to brainwash a bunch of uneducated group members with his wild and unrestrained remarks. Speaking of which, this infantry drill is also indecent, for which Dong Shuheng and Karl almost got into an argument. Prussians are not usually stubborn and rigid. At this time, Prussia had just partially equipped Dreiser, and Karl and his group of veterans had grown up playing with rifles, still believing in the practice of queuing up to be shot. Why would I spend a lot of money to buy you a Dreiser? There are many cheap front rifles in American warehouses. So both sides pulled up a platoon and conducted a simulation exercise. When Dong Shuheng played the attacking side, he used a 3-3 system infantry line, and when defending, he hid in the infantry trenches. Suddenly blinded Karl, it's too lacking in chivalrous spirit. However, the battle loss ratio of 1 to 10 greatly impressed this stubborn Prussian veteran. Finally, he came over hesitantly and asked Dong Shuheng if he could give this ceremony to Prussia. Dong Shuheng naturally agreed. Since he already knew, he couldn't keep it hidden. Karl, I hope you can bring your message to the envoy of Prussia. I hope to gain the friendship of Prussia. Dong Shuheng knew that Karl and his team had channels of communication with the envoy of Prussia. The recruitment of new soldiers was entrusted by Dong Shuheng to the Human Resources Department. Dong Shuheng simply established an armed forces department under the Human Resources Department, which was responsible for conscription. He also transferred two veterans from the guard to help, because they knew what kind of soldiers were best used. Five tails of silver for settling down, combined with a monthly salary of two tails, made the salt workers eager to invest. In a day, all 500 people were recruited, but the applicants still refused to leave. So Dong Shuheng gritted his teeth and recruited 500 more people. 
It is estimated that Mr. Sun from the finance department will have to jump with him. The young master's ability to earn money has not yet been seen, but his ability to spend money is top-notch. It turns out that he will have to use up the remaining 300,000 taels in his account. Dong Shuheng could only pretend to be mysterious and say, money will be available soon. These thousand people are equipped with front-loaded rifles, after all, Dreiser is his trump card. It's not time to pull it out and slide. Speaking of artillery, it's really eye-catching. It's not something that his regimental team can equip for the time being. So Dong Shuheng thought of the ancient branch of the grenadier. Previously, he instructed the Human Resources Department to recruit a group of craftsmen in Shanghai. Dong Shuheng built a military industrial workshop next to the Taipei military camp. When he took some time to take a look, he felt it was too chaotic, so he divided them into Taipei Bullet Factory and Taipei Powder Factory. Gunpowder is still used as granular black gunpowder, and there are no technical barriers in China. Smokeless gunpowder will take several years to appear. Of course, Dong Shuheng has now ordered people to search for relevant chemical talents. There is a French craftsman named Robert in the gun factory who claims to be skilled in making hand grenades. Dong Shuheng asked him to draw a blueprint and it turned out to be the same big iron ball. Dong Shuheng believes that Chinese hand grenades must come with a wooden handle, so they look handsome when worn on the body. So he picked up the pen and added a hollow wooden handle to the round ball. The wooden handle is very simple, it can be made with a factory steam lathe. Then he drew patterns on the iron ball, and it was divided into several petals. Oh boss, you're really a weapon genius. Your idea is really great. The wooden handle can increase the throwing distance, protect the lead, and the pattern can increase the number of shrapnel, so I can make the grenade smaller. Robert stared at his boss with admiration. Robert, work hard. If you can make more than 100 grenades every day, I will establish a separate grenade factory for you, and you will be the factory director. Oh boss, you're so generous. I'll definitely do it well, but boss, I need more manpower. That's no problem. The war generated a large number of refugees, and Dong Shuheng ordered the Ministry of Human Resources to recruit a large number of people. The younger ones are sent to the factory, while the older ones are sent to the farm. Salary doesn't matter, now as long as you give a meal, some people come to work. He divided his family's fields into two farms and spent 10,000 taels to purchase the development rights of Taipei's wasteland from the Dongtai County Magistrate. This county magistrate was supposed to donate money, so there's really no point in being a county magistrate in such a place where birds don't poop. Dong Shuheng's 10,000 taels of land, the county magistrate directly asked him to plot the land himself, as long as you don't encroach on someone else's land. So he built five farms in the later regions of Chuandong, Xinko, Dajong, Haifeng, and Fangqiang in one go. Each farm can accommodate 2,000 households of refugees. Of course, it's still on the shelf now. After the conditions are met, the seawall will be repaired, and the canal will be dug to treat alkali, then this place will become fertile land. In the barracks, 1,000 new recruits have started basic training. This batch of new recruits was organized into two battalions by Dong Shuheng, and more than 100 people were selected as the platoon leaders of the new recruits through individual military competitions. There is no problem with using this later establishment. Anyway, the regimental commander is not a regular army and there are no restrictions. No one cares about how he organizes it. 500 people formed a battalion, consisting of three ordinary platoons, one battalion consisting of a security team, a communication team, and an engineering team. In addition, he also selected personnel to form a special forces team, and Xiao Lu and Xiao Ai also assigned him to the special forces team. Now each of these guys has two colts inserted into their waists, just like a western cowboy. Who says Chinese martial artists don't use guns? Wu Qi Xiao AI draws a gun faster than a flying knife. It is said that this brother has really learned flying knives before. 
After feeding 100 bullets, the marksmanship was six times better than that of Dong Shuhan. If you want to go to a duel, with his speed and accuracy, there will definitely be no opponents. Huier saw it and also got into a fight with Dong Shuhan, asking for a gun. This girl now follows Dong Shuhan to the military camp whenever she has time. Not to mention, this girl, wearing an armed belt, has a smooth and uneven appearance, making a group of big soldiers in the army drool. The clothing of the group members was designed by Dong Shuhan himself, and now the group members outside were very casually, with almost no standardized clothing. He doesn't like the Qing army's uniform. He imitated the camouflage clothing of later generations and had people dye the fabric yellow and green, making long-sleeved tops and pants without zippers. The collar could only be tied with short ropes. The people around them jokingly referred to it as the flower army. Each person also has a hat with a hardwood brim. These salt workers cherish this set of clothes very much. You should know that they may not have had decent clothes before. The host said that each person will receive two new outfits every year. Some are planning to send the old ones home for their younger siblings to wear when the new ones come out. The training of the team members gradually became more formal. Dong Shuhan ran to the military camp while also doing rotation training for the company's management team when he had free time, so busy that he didn't touch the ground. Book Group Number 5703399070 Welcome everyone to join the group to chat, make friends, and criticize the author. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 No Revenge for Non Gentlemen. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 No Revenge for Non Gentlemen. In the study of the other courtyard, Dong Shuhan didn't go out today. He was preparing to write a training textbook on the company's management system. Although he didn't quite understand it, a little is better than nothing. Teaching these Qing dynasty people is still possible. At this moment, Xiaolu walked in and reported that Ji Ming Shan, who had disappeared for many days, was seeking to see him. After a while, a sleazy middle-aged man walked in. Long time no see, this guy's temperament has become even more lewd. I don't know if arranging this job for him has harmed him. How about it? Do you still like the job I've arranged for you? Dong Shuhan asked with a smile on his face. Returning to the chairman, I don't know if I like my humble position, but I feel very excited about it. I feel like the first half of my life was in vain, Ji Ming Shan replied with a flattering expression on his face. Hee <laughs> hee, let's get down to business first. Yes, chairman. You have given me some insight into the matter you asked me to investigate. We have noticed that Steward Zhu often visits the Huang family's smokehouse. My people have seen several times that Steward Zhu has entered, and young Master Huang has also entered. My subordinates have a smoker who secretly overheard their conversation next door, which is related to your last robbery. Oh, I see. Dong Shuhan could have guessed the specific plot, no matter how foolish he was. You don't need to worry about this matter anymore. You need to send more people to inquire about the movements of the Taiping army in Yangzhou, and also send people to check Zhang's routine and his family's defense situation. Dong Shuhan did not give the information department the authority to take action, and he had other arrangements for the execution of some specific tasks, which was also due to the consideration of decentralization. Ji Ming Shan, don't tell me. You've only done this in so many days. I heard you've already withdrawn 3,000 tails of silver. Although you're not allowed to go home, there's no need to keep running into the brothels of Gaoyu City. Upon hearing this, Ji Ming Shan was sweating profusely. It turned out that the chairman knew his every move very well. Hurry up and explain, chairman, you asked me to make friends with all kinds of people. It's not enough not to go to that kind of place. It's really necessary for work. Those people just need to treat him to flower wine and pour out everything for you. I really didn't spend a penny on the company's funds. These days, I have set up information stations in all counties of Yangzhou, and there are transportation lines between each county, which can regularly summarize information. 
In addition, we have also established our own information channels. The station masters at each station are reliable people, and those on the outside do not know our identity. It's not me bragging, I can know all the news in Yangzhou Prefecture within a day. Another important news is that the Imperial Army to suppress bandits has arrived. General Qishan led 28,000 banners and Green Camp soldiers to establish a Jiangbei camp in Lioha, west of Yangzhou, but has not yet launched an attack. This news was expected by Dong Shuhan. As for Qi Shan, he had been chasing the Taiping army and it was only then that he arrived, which was really slow enough. It seems like I'm about to set off. Of course, there were some things to take care of before departure, and he didn't want to go out and fight on his own, but as a result, the chrysanthemum was exploded. Finally, Ji Mingshan also submitted an information brief. After Ji Mingshan left, Dong Shuhan called for Xiao Lu and Xiao Ai. Close the door and quietly give orders. That evening, it was a time of darkness and high winds. The door of the Zhu butler's room was gently lifted open, and the sleeping Zhu butler was knocked unconscious by someone. I saw a short and burly masked man pick up a large piece of opium, light it and place it on the nose of butler Zhu. With the excessive consumption of opium, Zhu Guanjia foamed at the mouth and then convulsed and died. The next morning, Zhu Butler's family went to the county government office to report the case. After examining it, the grave worker concluded that they had died from excessive opium consumption, and such incidents occurred from time to time. So the case was hastily closed. Dong Jianian, in addition to his years of service, sent fifty tales of silver as compensation. People praised the benevolence and righteousness of the Dong family one after another. In Dong Shuheng's study, the second general of Hum Ha stood straight. During this time, these two goods followed the training of the group members, and their martial arts aura gradually faded away, replaced by a military aura. The matter is done very well. From the beginning, I was not planning to let you two charge into battle. Your battlefield is in darkness, and your value is much greater than the direct battle on the battlefield. Recently, I will strengthen the special training I teach you. In addition, I can ask the Human Resources Department to help you find your wandering senior brothers. Of course, cough cough, senior sisters and other similar things are also possible. As for talents, more is better. I hope to train the Special Forces team as soon as possible. I will provide you with the training outline and equipment, but the training will depend on you. Yes, Chairman, we promise to complete the task, the two of them said in unison. Xiao Ai is no longer as silent as before. In a while, I will set off to assist in preventing bandits. After I depart, there will be a major operation that you need to prepare for. It has already entered April, and Dong Shuheng has been in this world for over two months. Although he has been busy without touching the ground, he still feels too slow, and many things he doesn't know the specific time, but he has an inexplicable sense of urgency. I have been laying out my own plans, from company restructuring to recruiting refugees, forming team members, and then creating an arms factory. He has to do everything himself. He deeply felt helpless. Not only physical helplessness, but also psychological loneliness. Huier, the mother, and the shopkeeper all treat themselves well, but they cannot fully understand themselves. Do you still remember the agreement between the temple and her? The girl who disguised herself as a man had a lot in common with him, and the old man behind her was a scholar who truly opened his eyes to the world. He actually really wants to go to Gao Yu early, but unfortunately everything is not ready. Even though he was about to depart now, he was still not ready, just putting on a show. Thinking and thinking, the night is already deep. Huia brought a basin of foot washing water and gently helped Dong Shuhan take off his shoes and socks, while her index finger gently helped him wash his feet. At this moment, it seemed as if all the troubles had left him. Looking at the girl in front of me, although they have already had a skin to skin relationship. But as a person of this era, Dong Shuhan also had to be bound by the rules of this era. Don't worry, girl. No matter who enters my house in the future, 
young master, I will always love you. Huiyu didn't speak, and two tears splashed two splashes of water in her foot basin, just like the lotus embroidered on Huiyu's sleeve. The next day, several guards escorted Dong Xuheng on horseback to Taipei. The land here is flat and vast, with developed water transportation. To the east, there is a harbor that connects to Shanghai, and to the west, there is a waterway that connects to the Grand Canal. Hongzhou Lake directly flows to the west of Huai River. There are also abundant human resources in Huaixi, Shuzhou, and Shandong that can be introduced. As long as the land is cultivated, it can feed a large population, and abundant human resources can develop industries. Therefore, in Dong Shuheng's mind, this place has been designated as the headquarters of Huaihai Group. He is going to Yangzhou this time to compete for the actual management rights of this land. Then we can proceed with large-scale development. You don't have to be as constrained as you are now. Ding Li is a salt ding from Dingzhou, Taipei. This time, Dong's family recruited Ding from the group. Due to his strong physique and honest demeanor, he successfully passed the selection. My family received five tails of Anjia silver. Five tails of silver, a piece of salt that works tirelessly for a month is only a hundred won. It takes four years to save so much without eating or drinking. It is said that there is still two tails of salary per month. This is twenty times more than salt cubes. I heard that in the future, our family can still attend the school run by the Dong family, which can change the fate of our family. Who wants to be a salt worker for generations? Upon hearing this news, matchmakers from several villages in the east and west rushed over. Ding Li's family was originally poor, and at the age of twenty, he had not yet married his mother-in-law. The daughter of the Salt Ding family would rather marry a tenant farmer than Salt Ding. But this time, the other way around, so many big girls can choose for themselves, they are so beautiful. Finally, Ding's mother helped him select Gu Xiaohua from the neighboring village. For no other reason, it was because Xiaohua was strong and capable of working, and her buttocks were big and easy to raise. The wedding was arranged the next day. The parents of the Ding family advised Ding Li to keep a seed. The master has given such a good treatment, so it is to sell one's life to the master. It would be better to die than to go against the master's wishes. Ding Li came to the military camp with a solemn heart to report. There are many rules in the camp. When using the restroom, one must go to a designated place. Before doing anything, one must report to the commander. In the morning, one must wash their face and brush their teeth, and fold the blanket like tofu. Of course, Ding Li had no complaints at all. There is no other reason to fill the host's breakfast with mantu and warm broth. Although there is not much meat, the thick oil flakes on the soup make people drool. He killed seven of the slapped mantu alone, which he could only eat during the spring festival. That morning, Ding Li was practicing bayonets in his own platoon. The bayonet skills of foreign devils were not as fancy as those of Chinese people, but their killing efficiency was extremely high, with deadly guns and guns. Coupled with Dong Shuheng's 3333 cooperation, it was like adding wings to a tiger. Suddenly, the battalion commander sounded the assembly whistle, and everyone immediately stopped their training. The company commander began to lead the whole team towards the assembly point. After the battalion commander formed the team, a young man walked onto the podium. This is the owner, he has seen it several times in the cafeteria. The boss began to speak, and Ding Li straightened his body and saluted the boss. Brothers, in a few days, we will be going to Yangzhou to fight against the bandits. Most of you are on the battlefield for the first time so it's not embarrassing to be nervous and afraid. But those who fear death on the battlefield are often the first to die. Because when you leave your back to the enemy, you can't see anything, the enemy is firing, and you don't even have the opportunity to dodge. Brothers, I sincerely hope that you will come back alive from the battlefield, instead of me delivering your bodies and fifty tails of silver as compensation to your families. Only when you come back alive can you protect your families with the guns in your hands and let them live a prosperous life. 
No one is born to live a difficult life, and no one is born to help you. There is no savior in the world. To live a good life, we need our diligent hands. If anyone wants to take away the wealth we have created, we will shoot them through the chest with our guns. Pa! 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 Thunderous applause erupted. Dingley below tightly grasped the gun in his handshake. Although I may not understand it, it feels very reasonable. The owner is standing on our poor side. Is such a person worth following on their own? Next is a military lesson. Dong Shuhan used simple and understandable reasoning to explain to everyone the concepts of concentrating superior forces to annihilate enemy forces in motion and great detours and encirclements. Dong Shuhan would share his limited knowledge of modern warfare with everyone whenever he had the opportunity. That's right, he doesn't expect all the soldiers to become officers. But among so many people, there are always a few who have talent. You should know that when Emperor Taizu conquered the country, many of the great generals below were born with mud legs. Ding Li below listened attentively. He was a smart man who had been learning to write in the military camp these days. He was the fastest learner in the company. The platoon leader only came in a while earlier than himself. Perhaps in the future, I can also mix with the platoon leader and show my face among the neighbors. Perhaps his Ding family can also achieve great success. In fact, sometimes authors are even more urgent than readers, and everyone wants to get straight to the point earlier. But there should still be some groundwork. So what? There must be a little prelude, right? Book Group Number 5703399907 Welcome everyone to join the group to chat, make friends, and criticize the author. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Embark and Prepare Busy. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Embark and Prepare Busy. The preparations for the deployment of troops are being carried out nervously. Zhang Xuanjin sent several urging documents, but the other salt merchants were not ready yet. Dong Xuheng was already fast here, and even the Qin court couldn't just pull up a team. Soldiers and horses have not yet moved, food and forage have taken the lead. With a focus on the future, Dong Xuheng entrusted full responsibility for the logistics work of his team to the logistics department. A world-class military must have a first-class staff and logistics department. Dong Xuheng also established food processing factories and bedding factories in Taipei. He handed the food factory a method for making compressed biscuits, which was actually not complicated. It was to mix the cooked coarse flour evenly with lard, salt, and other seasonings, shape it with a wooden mold, and then compact it with a tool similar to oil pressing. This creates a compressed biscuit that is easy to store and carry. When eating this type of biscuit, just take a small bite and pour some water into your mouth. The biscuit will slowly melt and have a strong sense of fullness. Dong Xuheng didn't consider the taste, after all, the current Tuan Ding mouth hasn't been raised yet. In terms of individual equipment, Dong Xuheng has really put in some effort. Each group member wears a wooden hat covered in camouflage. Yes, that's right, it's the kind worn by our southern neighbors, but this hat is not exclusive to them. The island guarding officers and soldiers in the South China Sea also wear it. In addition, this type of hat is still popular among explorers around the world, becoming a standard accessory for gentlemen. Not only can it provide shade and rain protection, but it can also to some extent block soil and rock attacks. Due to the use of hardwood, even weak arrows can withstand one or two attacks. Continuing to introduce, each regimental commander is equipped with a cowhide belt. On the left side of the belt is a bayonet cover, a kettle hanging point, and on the right is an ammunition bag. Soldiers equipped with rifles now use oil paper fixed charge gunpowder and mini bullets. These ammunition can already be produced at the powder factory in Taipei. Each team member is equipped with a marching quilt, which is packed and carried behind them during the march. In addition, there is a cylindrical cloth bag that holds marching rations and spare clothes. When marching, 
This backpack is placed horizontally above the quilt, and a wide cloth bag is passed through the armpit and tied horizontally to the chest. Behind the cotton quilt, there is a horizontal fork for an engineering shovel. Of course, it is just an ordinary engineering shovel imported by Dong Shuheng. Dong Shuheng knows the style in later generations, but the current steel conditions cannot meet it. Indeed, crossing over to farm requires steelmaking. In addition, each team member has four leggings, with two for backup. A hand grenade bag is placed diagonally on the right side and can hold five hand grenades. The kettle is slung diagonally on the left side, and the intersection can be fixed on the belt to prevent sliding left and right. The marching of the troops relies entirely on foot strength, and each operation requires three days of logistical supplies. The logistics department establishes a mule and horse transportation team and fleet, responsible for following up on supplies. In his regular training, Dong Shuheng pays special attention to the marching training of the team members. Every morning, the team members have to fully armed off-road for 5 kilometers. We need to conduct a 50-kilometer rapid march once a week. Fortunately, the team members have become accustomed to hardship and endurance. As long as they have a full stomach, each team member can persevere. Inside the military camp, Ding Li looked at his fully armed comrades and himself, and for some reason, he naturally straightened his chest as he walked. He now feels more refined than Zhang Xiuzai in town. At this moment, the thing he most wants to do is to put on this outfit and go back to show Xiaohua. It is said that this whole outfit was made up by the owner. This boss is really not an ordinary person. In the courtyard of Dong Mansion, Dong Shuheng arranged for people to build watchtowers around the walls and on both sides of the gate, and sent rows of soldiers to guard. I believe no one in Dongtai can threaten the Dong family anymore. Young master, there's no need to send someone to guard, as long as I'm here, Huier patted Colt on her waist and said. Just because you're amazing, I'm afraid my Huier will be taken by bandits and become the village suppressing lady. Young master, take Huier with you. Huier can protect you, Huier said to Dong Shuhan with an expectant expression. Speaking of which, Huier has been following Dong Shuhan almost without much separation. This time Dong Shuhan went on a long journey, her heart couldn't help but empty chatter. In the governor's office of Gao Yu City, an old man dressed in an old 7th grade official uniform sat behind a desk, his eyebrows furrowed. Governor Yan Wending is currently struggling to protect himself and is biting people everywhere. Organize team exercises to assist in defense every two days. I am just the governor of a small state, without power or money. Where can I go to recruit a team? The salt merchants and wealthy families in the city all have group members, but each of them has a thicker background than themselves. Who would bird themselves? At this moment, a graceful figure flashed in. Dad, my daughter has brought you good news. Seeing his beloved daughter come in, Wei Zhizhou squeezed out a rare smile. My daughter is intelligent and eager to learn, and she also has a good understanding of the Western learning she advocates, which she deeply loves. Oh, Jenner, what other good news can there be? Did you get another new book? Oh, no, Dad. Do you remember the boy I told you about before? Upon hearing this, Wei Zhizhou said solemnly, Jenner, although Dad is not that kind of antique, it is not in line with your daughter's family's reserved demeanor to always mention a young man. If you like that young man and he comes to propose, Dad won't have any sense of family background and will naturally agree. Wei Yuzhen blushed and stomped her feet, saying, You're saying that, hmm. I won't tell you this good news. All right, good daughter, can't daddy stop talking? Dad, what has been bothering you the most lately? Wei Zhizhou sighed and said, It's not yet about sending troops to Yangzhou. Although my father is in charge of Gaoyu, no one can control it. We can't let the people under our rule empty handed make cannon fodder for others. Wei Yuzhen chuckled and said, Dad, Dong Shuheng sent me a letter saying that he has organized a thousand team exercises and is about to leave for Yangzhou. He will pass by Gao Yu when the time comes. 
I was thinking that if you ask him to hold the position of inspection department at Gao Yu, wouldn't he be able to submit the task to the higher authorities? Do you think job titles can be granted casually? Wei Zhizhou pretended to be angry. Oh my, dad, don't you think about when it's now? Is there still any soldiers available in Jiangnan? The huge Nanjing city will be lost in a few days. Dad wants to give it a ninth grade inspection, but it's not easy to catch it. Hmm. Wei Zhizhou pondered, last time you said that the young man was proficient in Western learning, had a broad perspective, and quite insightful. I don't know if it's true. This time, I can just meet him and see who he really studied from. Dong Shuheng is worried about money in the Dong family's separate courtyard. Lu Mingyuan sat at the desk in the study, with Zhang Mingfang, the head of the finance department, sitting next to him. This was a spirited old man, only a few years younger than Lu Mingyuan, who used to be the big accountant in the family. Lu Mingfang said, Chairman, you spent a total of 75,000 taels of silver on purchasing military supplies before, and nearly 10,000 taels of silver were used to strengthen the monthly salary for recruiting troops and Ding En's family expenses. Several factories were planned to use 100,000 taels of silver, mainly because the imported machines were too expensive. In addition, more than 5,000 refugees have been recruited, and each farm has infrastructure to invest, spending money like flowing water. I have been following the master for more than 30 years, and I have never spent so much money at once. Dong Shuheng also frowned upon hearing this. He has actually slowed down his pace. If I had known earlier that in order to develop in northern Jiangsu, the most important thing was to control water, not only the river but also the sea. The Fan Gong embankment has been in disrepair for a long time, with seawater flowing back and severe soil salinization. The problem with the Huai River is also significant. These two projects are huge gold swallowers. Hey, we can't think about it in the long run. Let's first solve the immediate problem. All right, I'll inject 500,000 tails of capital into the company soon. Uncle Lu will go to Shanghai to purchase a batch of silk reeling machines and textile machines, and you can go to Prussians to buy them. I will have Carl go to Shanghai with the external relations department to help you communicate first. In addition, Americans have a shipyard in Shanghai that can build steam small fire engines with a capacity of less than 500 tons. The information department says it's going to go bankrupt now, and Americans are ready to take action. You can talk and try to buy it. When I'm not here, choose a good place in your Taipei area and build the silk reeling factory and textile factory, all using Prussian machines. I suggest planning it together with our previous factory. Move out the ammunition factory and find a separate place. Put the other factories together for easy management in the future. In the future, we will plan an industrial area of the Huaihai group there. When the machine rang, the golden tails of gold were 10,000 tails, and Dong Shuhan couldn't help but calculate in his heart. Little money, hurry and run into my master's pocket. At this time, the westernization movement had not yet begun. Dong Shuhan took the lead, and no one in the whole Qin dynasty could compete with him. What he lacks now is nothing but military force to protect himself. Because no matter how much money you have in the Qin dynasty, it's useless. You're just a fat sheep in the eyes of landlord officials. Only when a fat sheep grows horns and fangs can it dominate its own destiny. In Dong Shuheng's plan, the future of northern Jiangsu will focus on a population-intensive economy, mainly developing industries such as agriculture, textiles, medicine, and deep processing of machinery. The water network here is dense, and the transportation of raw materials and finished products is very convenient. As a fundamental industry in the smelting industry, the most important one is steelmaking. He is prepared to wait for his influence to reach Shuzhou before further development. It should be noted that Shuzhou was an old heavy industrial city in later generations, with a certain reserve of coal and iron resources. After seeing off Lu Mingyuan and the others, he brought his uncle Chen Dongsheng, who is now the Minister of Agriculture of the group. Uncle, 
How much wasteland have we enclosed now? Chen Dongxing scratched his head and said awkwardly, To be honest, I can't figure it out right now. County Magistrate Sun has collected money and let us occupy it ourselves. In the entire Taipei area alone, there are over 500,000 acres of unowned wasteland. However, these areas lack water conservancy measures, and it will take at least two to three years to transform them into good farmland. We are currently following your instructions to excavate ditches, wash the land with rainwater, and use steam pumps to drain low-lying areas. We still lack a lot of pumps, and we hope to replenish some. I think in the first two years, we can plant some soybean and alfalfa fields. In order to improve utilization, our Ministry of Agriculture is planning to build a cattle and sheep breeding farm. Of course, this requires initial funding. Sure, I approved it. Thinking of Xinghua beef and Dong Tai goats from later generations, Dong Shuheng's stomach unconsciously took over his brain. In addition, my uncle remembers to recruit some experienced workers in planting mulberry, sericulture, and cotton. In the future, we will plant cotton and mulberry trees in large quantities in northern Jiangsu, and develop the cotton textile and silk reeling industries, Dong Shuheng added. Sent off Minister of Agriculture Chen Dongsheng. Dong Shuheng once again brought in Lu Dehai, the manager of the shipping company. Uncle Lu, for this expedition, the fleet needs to transport supplies along with you. You may also face some dangers. There are naval forces involved in the banditry. Chairman, running a boat on the ground of our Qing dynasty is not without danger. There is often no village or shop on the water surface, and many fleets are both merchants and bandits. Therefore, we always bring guys on board. No, 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 these are not enough. This time, I will have General Manager Lu go to Shanghai and contact the American shipyard to help renovate your ship, install five-pound cannons, and reinforce the ship's side with iron plates. Once you are ready, you can directly meet me at Gaoyu. Remember to go from Jingjiang to Shanghai, not by canal, where bandits are active. The previous Zhang inspector was on the Salt Road, which is different from the inspection in this state and county. The former has much greater power. Book Group Number, 5703399907, Welcome everyone to join the group to chat, make friends, and criticize the author. End of this chapter. Chapter 9, The Emergence of a Group of Soldiers and Their Shocking Impact on the World. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9, The Emergence of a Group of Soldiers and Their Shocking Impact on the World. On April 15, the sky was as clear as a blue paper, and a few thin white clouds seemed to have been melted by the sun, slowly floating in the wind. The rapeseed flowers in the mixed fields on the roadside compete to bloom, like a golden ocean. In the morning, the county government officer reported that there was a large army outside the north gate. Sun supervisor of the county hurried to the north gate in a sedan chair. At this moment, the steward of the Dong Mansion reported that his own group of soldiers had passed by and were preparing to go west to help capture the bandits. Only then did Sun Supervisor of the county feel relieved. At this time, many people also gathered outside the north gate to watch the excitement. As the team drew closer, the sound of neat running could be heard. The crowd unconsciously retreated, the sound of neat steps giving a heavy sense of oppression. Passerby A, look, what clothes are they wearing, and that hat, I've never seen them before. Passerby B, that colorful, like a beggar, why dye good clothes like that? Passerby C, but you look so spirited, you should be like a big man. Passerby Ding, are they carrying firearms on their shoulders? These firearms are so long, they don't look like bird firearms, do they? Passerby Wu, Look at the neatly stacked blankets behind them, they look like bricks. The passerby said, listen, they're singing. A group of big men are singing. Listen, what's singing? I only heard the marching team running in unison, stepping on their steps and singing a resounding and powerful song. This is the teacher of kings, said an old scholar carefully, hiding in the crowd. 
Hee hee, this Dong Air has some insight and is worthy of being my friend Bao Yoji, said a young man in a brocade robe standing in the crowd. This person is over 1.8 meters tall, standing there like a flock of chickens, looking like a wealthy child, but giving off a sense of desolation. With a loud bang, a blue and white porcelain vase from Jing Dajun shattered and was sold to foreigners for at least ten tails of silver. In the courtyard of the Huang family, Huang Hao was furious at a group of servants. Lu Bin, I gave you so much silver to buy a gun. You said you bought a gun. With so much money, you only bought a bunch of broken bird guns. Are you here to fool this young master? Originally, the Huang family was also going to organize a group exercise this time. Mr. Huang entrusted this important matter to his beloved third son, hoping that he could experience it. As a result, Huang Hao took out 20,000 taels of silver and asked his subordinate Lu Bin to buy a firearm. This guy went to Suzhou City, indulged in extravagance and alcohol, and then went to the casino to try his luck. The result, of course, I lost. Fortunately, this guy stopped in time and left over 5,000 taels of silver. He could only buy over 500 secondhand bird guns in Suzhou City, probably stolen by Qing soldiers. Then, on the first day of training, Huang's team members exploded more than 10 guns, injuring multiple people on the spot. The newly recruited team members have stopped working and are going to leave in a fuss. Huang Hao finally calmed down the matter by flipping through his promises. The group members dare not use bird guns and can only replace them with long spears and large knives. They cannot let the group members fight the bandits empty-handed. The group leader hired by the Huang family used to work at the escort agency and was known as the Big Knife King Five. He was skilled in his swordsmanship and had already shown disdain for firearms. Pat your chest to ensure that you will train the team members well. It was already like this, but when Huang Hao saw Dong Shuheng's team of soldiers, he was inexplicably jealous. Why is Dong Shuheng so arrogant when his family has no family background or background? Wait, I won't kill you. Your twin sister is mine, and your maid is also mine. With a fit of anger towards his subordinates, Huang Hao felt much better in his heart. He also ordered someone to prepare a carriage and rush to the Salt Road Inspection Office. Xinhua County is located at the Yendao Zhang Inspection Office. Huang Hao met Zhang Menglong. Brother Zhang, you don't know how arrogant Dong Shuheng is. He openly pulled his team members out of Dong Tai County to show off his power. I think his team members are definitely more than 500. This is a public rebellion, Huang Hao gritted his teeth and instigated. He is now willing to give Dong Shuheng a dead end and then act quickly. Don't worry, Brother Huang. Dong Shuheng won't be jumping around for a few days now. Let him be so active, and the bandits will help us eliminate him. Even the Eight Banners army in Jiangning City was annihilated overnight by the bandits. It's not easy to eliminate his hundreds of small team exercises. Zhang Menglong said stealthily, Li Gong, the governor of the military troop, has some friendship with my family. Let's take care of it and have the governor's office send Dong Shuheng to the most dangerous place. This is called borrowing a knife to kill. Isn't it too fast? Ha ha ha. Huang Hao laughed heartily and said, Brother Zhang is so clever. You're so happy, you're so happy. Brother Zhang, this management is naturally from my Huang family, and I can't let you spend it. Brother Huang, in this case, the governor is collecting military funds. If you can donate 50,000 taels, I believe not only will this matter be successful, but Brother Huang can even obtain an official position as a chief executive. Okay, do it, just follow what Brother Zhang said. Huang Hao gritted his teeth. If there is an official position, he is still confident in persuading the old man to pay this money, after all, having an official position is also very helpful for the family's business. As the two of them colluded, Dong Shuheng bid farewell to his family outside Dong Tai City. Mrs. Chen and Hui Er couldn't help but shed tears as they watched. Dong Shuheng pretended to be serious and said, Mother, 
don't cry when the army goes on an expedition. It's unlucky. Besides, the child is going to make soy sauce, cough, he's going to do odd jobs for the official army, there's no danger. Mrs. Chen quickly suppressed her tears upon hearing this, and Hui Er beside her also secretly wiped her eyes. Today, Dong Shuheng is also dressed in camouflage shorts, with an extraordinary appearance and a heroic aura. There are Colt pistols hanging on each side of the belt tied up. He didn't specially make himself a military uniform, for no other reason, it was because he was afraid of death. You should know that the style of slaying generals and seizing flags is still popular nowadays. Standing next to him were fifteen big men, a watery dryser. Strangely, there is also a group of five people next to it. There are two soldiers pulling a large round bucket with wheels. Friends, this is not Gatling. That guy is still too complicated. Dong Shuhan is not a physics teacher or a mechanical doctor. When he was a police officer, he only played with pistols and sprayers. The thing placed here now is the historically unknown Montigny machine gun, which is similar to a swarm of bees from our Ming dynasty. Essentially, it is a discharge gun that places 37 barrels into a cylinder, and the bullets are loaded into the 37 small holes on the circular bolt locking block. The gunman places the loaded locking block at the gap at the back of the gun, and then pushes a lever to push the locking block forward to complete the locking. At this point, the bullet is perfectly aligned with each barrel. Then the gunman rotated a joystick located at the back, and the firing device fired each of these 37 bullets one by one, completing a complete rotation and firing all the bullets. After firing the bullets, use another locking block that has been loaded with the bullets to circulate and form a more intense firepower. A group of five, two squad members dragging guns, one as a shooter and one as a reloader. A team leader is responsible for carrying five locking blocks and also filling them during battles. There are also two team members responsible for carrying ammunition, and they are also the deputy shooter and deputy loader. This machine gun was drawn by Dong Shuheng and manufactured by the military factory. In fact, its technical difficulty is not high, it is basically a parallel rifle, and ammunition can be loaded with Dreiser's copper shell. Dong Shuheng was also with him this time just in case, after all, it can pour out 300 bullets in a minute. In the city of Yangzhou, Xia Guan and Deputy Prime Minister Zing Lichang sat upright in the lobby, which was the yamen of the Yangzhou governor. At the beginning of the year, Zeng Lichang followed Lin Fengxiang to bloodless victory over Yangzhou. Shortly after, Lin Fengxiang was appointed as one of the main generals of the Northern Expedition, and Zeng Lichang was appointed as the defender of Yangzhou. He was also appointed as a Xia official and deputy prime minister by the Heavenly King. He came from a humble background in Lichang and joined the Taiping army in his hometown in the early years. Later, he became a member of Lin Fengxiang's army and followed Lin Fengxiang to occupy Yangzhou city. When Lin Fengxiang became the commander-in-chief of Yangzhou, he was just a guard. Now he is also the lord of a city. He is now full of energy and arrogant. Qingo is just a group of cowards, and even though Qishan's Jiangbei camp has been built for so long, they can only dare to monitor Yangzhou city from afar. It seems that Lin Shui's northern expedition is bound to destroy everything, and the downfall of the heavenly kingdom is just around the corner. Recently, he has collected over a thousand beautiful women worth three million tails of gold and silver treasures. This batch of wealth was sent to the heavenly king and the eastern king, so I think I can go further. When the Taiping army first entered Yangzhou, according to the agreement with the surrendered gentry and people in Kaicheng, they were truly innocent. But with the establishment of Jiangbei camp and the stability of Tianjin city, the high-ranking members of Tianping Heavenly Kingdom gradually changed their class stance. They became like the Qin court, even surpassing them without exception. The establishment of the Heavenly King's mansion consumed several million tails of silver in one go, and even recruited five thousand maids from the people. The Eastern Prince's mansion follows suit, and other kings follow suit as well. 
Hong Xiuquan has infected a bunch of kings among his old brothers in Guangxi. A lot of Guangwang Mansion has been built. In addition, there are a lot of prime ministers, even naming them as spring, summer, autumn, and winter, fearing that their names may not be enough. Yang Zhou was prosperous and was occupied without the flames of war. In the eyes of the big masters in Tianjin, it's just a piece of fat. So the group of people who led the way in Yangzhou city could only sigh, the Taiping army doesn't emphasize military ethics. Since the establishment of Qishan Jiangbei camp, Zeng Lichang has forcibly separated all men and women and led all men to guard the city. Women are incorporated into the women's camp. It should be noted that Yangzhou, a place with a rich cultural heritage, has the most conservative folk customs. It is unknown how many people have committed suicide by jumping into wells as a result, and even led to the situation in Yangzhou where well water is not drinkable. This move by the Taiping army undoubtedly caused public anger. Some people even missed the Qin court, as under its rule, they could still solve problems with money. The Taiping army and these Guangxi veterans are just a group of bandits. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Marching and Meeting at Gaoyo's End You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Marching and Meeting at Gaoyo's End Dong Xuheng naturally still doesn't know about the situation in Yangzhou City. In this era without telegrams and telephones, transmitting information basically relies on running errands. The speed of information dissemination is just a little faster than that of people running. At this moment, Dong Xuheng and his team were marching towards Gao Yu. The total distance from Dong Tai to Gao Yu is over 90 kilometers. In the middle, there is a dense water network, but fortunately, Dong Xuheng and his team walked the main road openly and didn't need to build bridges when encountering water. Dong Xuheng wants to test his team's marching ability during this march. A dirt road runs straight through a golden rapeseed field, extending into the distance. This is the Xinhua territory of Yangzhou Prefecture, where a group of ragged farmers are fertilizing the green wheat fields. Suddenly, a neat running sound came from afar. Many people stopped their farm work and looked up. I saw a colorful army running along the main road. This army is hanging and carrying, full of things. The key is that so many things don't affect them running forward at the same rhythm. There were many people in the entire team, and the team was very long, but no one stepped on the nearby farmland. Be good, they are all carrying firearms, are they? Are they the army sent by the capital to capture the bandits? Oh, no, it seems that the red flag is displaying Huai Hai Regiment training. Huh. I haven't heard of it before. A gentry saw it and murmured. At this moment, Dong Xuheng was in the team. In order to set an example and boost morale, he marched with the team on foot. At this time, Dong Xuheng no longer had the usual handsome, graceful, and graceful appearance. Sweat mixed with the dust raised on the road, creating grooves on his fair face. The braids on the head have also been soaked in sweat, and droplets of sweat flowed down the tips of the braids. This makes Dong Xuheng, who usually loves cleanliness, unable to bear it. His biggest wish now is to take a hot bath and change into clean clothes. However, when he saw the Tuan Ding beside him carrying dozens of pounds more weight and still gritting his teeth to persevere, Dong Xuheng could only persevere. Hey! To be the protagonist, you need to be prepared to endure hardship. When my team reaches tens of thousands, there's no need to rush ahead and set an example like this. Looking at the group of soldiers beside him, even Dong Xuheng, who had been heavily influenced by divine dramas in later generations, could not help but exclaim, what a group of good soldiers. At this time, it was already noon. According to the original plan, we had to rush to the outside of Gaoyu city to set up camp, which was considered the completion of this emergency march. By now, we have completed more than 40 kilometers, nearly half of the journey, from morning to now. Dong Xuheng glanced at the pocket watch. The instruction was given to the conductor to rest in place for half an hour. Two short and rough whistles sounded. 
The long queue echoed with the sound of commands, and each company commander heard the whistle and was giving instructions to the battalion commander. In a row, everyone has it. Rest in place for half an hour. Second company. The soldiers sat on the weed mats on both sides of the road, took out their own kettles, and took a sip of the cold boiled water they brought. Some soldiers took a bite of compressed biscuits from the water in their mouths, and the strong aroma of wheat flour immediately spread in their mouths. Ding Li was assigned to the 2nd Battalion, 3rd Company, and 1st Class. He ate the compressed biscuits in his hand and thought to himself, if only his parents, younger siblings, and daughter-in-law could all eat such biscuits every day, that would be great. Anyway, next time he comes home, he must bring some back. At best, he can save some food in the military. At this moment, he noticed the chairman walking towards him. He quickly put away the food and water in his hands and saluted immediately. Hello chairman, Ding Dingli, class 1 of the 2nd Battalion and 3rd Company, is resting for a meal. Thank you for your hard work, please continue. Dong Shuheng replied with a salute. Under the dual influence of several Prussians and their own training syllabus, his troops at least excelled in terms of military appearance and rules. This is particularly satisfying for Dong Shuheng. He actually has some obsessive compulsive disorder, and he likes this kind of neat and consistent feeling. There is a peninsula deep into the lake on the Hunan side of Gaoyu, named Xiao Jiajian, which originally had a village. But it no longer exists. The current village is occupied by a group of water bandits, led by a bandit named Lai Shancheng. This person is brave and ruthless. He was originally a ship runner on the canal, and occasionally robbed cargo ships that ran orders. Moreover, this person always robs money and kills people with cruel methods, so he has not been wanted by the government for so many years. After Yang Zhou was occupied by the Taiping army, he gathered dozens of ships and nearly a thousand people to operate in Gaoyu Lake, looting on all sides and attracting young refugees, with a faint trend of expansion. At this moment, Lai Shancheng was sitting in the main hall of the Chiao family's courtyard, with a little girl in front and behind helping him massage his shoulders and legs, feeling very comfortable. Taking advantage of the Yangzhou Rebellion, Lai Shancheng and his gang of bandits did indeed rob many young ladies, and the best thing was to keep it for themselves. If you say this young lady from Yangzhou is a water spirit, she can also serve people. Moreover, Lai Shancheng discovered that by sending women to his brothers, he made his subordinates more loyal to him. Lai Shancheng is also a person with great ambitions, and he is not satisfied with the status quo of being a bandit. Now, he is preparing to do something big, make a pledge, and go invest in Changmao. It is said that Chang Mao had a high-ranking official with the surname Lai, and perhaps he could even climb up to relatives. Perhaps, when I get there, I can still become a great general. Speaking of which, Lao Lai was also lucky. A person who claimed to be the steward of the Huang family approached him. This Huang family used to have some friendship with me, and I even helped the Huang family with several black jobs. This time, the Huang family approached him generously, offering only 5,000 taels to eliminate a group of Dong family members who had just arrived at Gao Yu. The old man doesn't care what the Huang family's purpose is, he plans to take on this job. One reason is that these group exercises are all beginners, and their combat power is definitely not strong. My own group of old brothers have seen blood before. Secondly, this batch of team training is to assist in defending Yangzhou. If eaten, it can be used as a pledge to join the Taiping army. The old man gathered several big leaders to discuss and decided to send a few brothers to the vicinity of Gaoyu city to investigate, mainly to see when these team members will arrive. Gaoyu city is built adjacent to the east bank of Gaoyu lake, facing Yangzhou city across the lake. The land here is fertile and the population is dense, making it a top-notch county. At this moment, as the sun sets in the west, the afterglow of the setting sun falls on the surface of the lake, and the shimmering surface seems to be covered with a layer of golden scales. Wei Yuzhen stood on the high watchtower at the city gate, 
dressed in a goose-yellow chong sam with a swaying gait on her head. She didn't see the beautiful sunset on the west lake today. A pair of bright eyes stared tightly at the earth eroded by night in the east. She remembered a few days ago, the boy surnamed Dong wrote a poem for herself. This guy was clearly a businessman, and he even learned how to dance and write. But this word is written quite well. Outside the Changting Pavilion, by the ancient road, the lush grass stretches to the sky. The evening wind brushes against the willows and the sound of the flute lingers, and the setting sun lingers on the mountains outside the mountains. At the end of the sky, at the corner of the earth, my acquaintances are half scattered. A pot of turbid wine brings me joy, and tonight I bid farewell to my cold dreams. Outside the Changting Pavilion, by the ancient road, the lush grass stretches to the sky. When I ask you when you will come, do not hesitate. At the end of the earth, at the corner of the earth, my acquaintances are half scattered. Life is rare to gather together, but there are many separations. She hummed softly in her mouth, her face blushing unconsciously. Miss, you've become a flower addict again, whispered the nearby yinger. Dong Shuhan really doesn't even have the strength to date beautiful women at this moment. The team members under my command are fine, after all, they have endured all kinds of hardships, and at least now they can eat enough and wear warm clothes. He is a young man, although he has also strengthened his exercise recently. But along the way, he felt like his bones were about to fall apart. In order to avoid misunderstandings, Dong Shuhan placed his team in Xiejia town to the east of Gaoyu city. After communicating with the town, the team set up a camp outside the city. There is no need for Dong Shuhan to personally inquire about the matter of setting up camp. After handing over the command of the regiment to Lu Qingnan, he led a guard team into the town. He only wants to do one thing now, take a hot bath and have a peaceful sleep. Having a rare early sleep, Dong Shuheng naturally woke up early in the morning. After a simple wash, I changed into a regular sergeant blue shirt. With a few disguised guards, they entered Gao Yu City. Gao Yu City is obviously much more bustling than Dong Tai, after all, it is adjacent to Yangzhou. After the occupation of Yangzhou, many wealthy families fled to Gao Yu, which also led to an abnormal prosperity scene here. Dong Shuheng found a shop selling steamed buns. When you arrive at Gao Yu, you should always try Xilong Bao here. In Dong Shuheng's senior year of high school, he basically had a basket of Yangzhou steamed buns every morning. The meat filling of Yangzhou Baozi is filled with sugar, making it particularly fresh to eat. He ordered ten baskets of steamed buns in one breath and called for the accompanying guards to eat together. Each person ordered another bowl of tofu pudding. A burp came out, and my throat was filled with the fragrance of beans. The first major goal of Dong Shuheng's travels is to eat all kinds of local snacks and see if these famous foods have changed in taste after a century of development. In the future, he also wants to try roasted buns from Xinjiang, horse intestines from Kazakhstan, and Daliaba from Russia. By the way, let's take a look at the unfiltered baked bun and bread dishes. After breakfast, he is going to do some household chores. Sister Dong Shuyun and Dong Shumi have been taken to their mother's house by their third mother for some time now. He came here this time to have someone pick up his sister and bring her back to Dongtai. After all, Gaoyo's proximity to Yangzhou is not very safe either. Third Lady Bai comes from a middle-class merchant family in Gaoyu. Due to the previous incident with the Huang family, there was still a conflict with Dong Shuhan. The Bai family heard a knocking outside the door early in the morning. The gatekeeper opened the door and saw a handsome young man. The gatekeeper didn't know Dong Shuhan, and only when Dong Shuhan reported his family name did he go to report to the master. In no time, a middle-aged man in his forties welcomed him out. The middle-aged man's name is Bai Qing, and he is the elder brother of the third lady. I saw him wearing a long shirt, with a square face that was unnecessary, and a smile on his face, appearing very friendly. He was an authentic businessman. Knowing that Dong Shuheng and the third wife were able to maintain such a smooth demeanor, 
it is evident that he is a smooth person. After chatting for a while, Bai Qing and Dong Shuhan were led to the courtyard where the third lady lived. Through a flower door, Dong Shuhan saw two girls embroidering flowers in the corridor from a distance. The twin sisters must be his sister. Second brother. Look, it's second brother coming. One of the girls said as she saw someone enter and jumped up to run towards Dong Shuhan. Are you Shuyun? Dong Shuhan raised his hand to block the girl who almost jumped into his arms. Oh my, second brother, I'm Shumi. Why can't you even recognize me? Dong Shumi said coquettishly, obviously with a lively and lively temperament. At this moment, another girl looked over with a smile and bowed slightly, saying, Hello, second brother. Then she said seriously to her sister, Sister, if you don't stand still, there's no etiquette in front of second brother. Oh my, the personality contrast between these two girls is too great. At this moment, a middle-aged woman walked out of the house. She looked around thirty on the outside, dressed in white clothes and plain clothes, with only a few wax plums embroidered on her collar. The bun is pulled up high, like a real-life version of a white lady. No wonder my two younger sisters are so handsome. It turns out that their mother has good genes, Dong Shuhan thought to himself. Cough. Bai Shi saw Dong Shuhan staring at her up and down, feeling very angry. In his heart, he said to himself, this kid is getting more and more unruly. No wonder he did the disobedient thing he did last time. Is it his turn to be the host when I marry my daughter? Upon hearing Bai's clear cough, Dong Shuhan quickly regained consciousness and awkwardly saluted, greetings to San Yang. Is everything okay with San Yang at Gaoyu? My elder brother treats me well, and there is no one here to make things difficult for our mother. Shu Hengda can rest assured, said Bai with a strange expression. Dong Shuhan ignored the inside and outside of Bai's words. Lang said in a loud voice, My child, I have been ordered by the court to lead troops to support Yang Zhou and will stay in Gao Yu for a few days. I have nothing to do today. I want my two sisters to take me around Gao Yu city, and I hope San Yang agrees. Dong Shuhan doesn't want to stay with this San Yang anymore, even if you look like Bai Nyang. Bai was about to refuse, but at this moment, Shumi said first, All right, all right, my second brother has come all the way. As a younger sister, we should fulfill our landlord's friendship. What kind of landlord friendship are you? Bai Shi thought to herself and glared at Shumi. Mother, the child also thinks it's possible to go out for a walk with his second brother. My sister and I only wander around the city without leaving the city gate, so there shouldn't be any problem, Xu Yun stood up and said. Seeing her obedient eldest daughter saying the same, Bai could only agree. The streets of Gao Yu city are divided into two markets, east and west. The east market is mostly dominated by restaurants and tea houses, while the west market is closer to the water transportation dock with many department stores for grain, oil, fish, and salt. There are many snack and variety stalls on the street. It used to be in Yangzhou city, but now it's all here. Walking on the streets of Gao Yu city, Shumi wanted to buy one thing at a time and then another. When she saw the gun on Dong Shuheng's waist, she also wanted to take it out to play, which frightened Dong Shuheng and he quickly refused. Xu Yun quietly followed behind Dong Shuheng, occasionally saying a few words. At this moment, in the distant Rouge shop, a young lady from an official family and a little maid were buying water powder. Miss, look at that, isn't it Mr. Dong? Upon hearing this, Wei Yuzhen looked out and was indeed Dong Shuhan. Who are the two pretty women next to him? It doesn't look like his maid. Wei Yuzhen suddenly felt an inexplicable sense of injustice in her heart. She turned around and turned her back to Yinger, saying, Yinger, I'm not feeling well. Let's go home. I have a naming phobia, so many names are given by assistance. End of this chapter